Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome all to the 2012 State Farm Home Run Derby. You're coachable. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Berman. It's a thrill for all of us at ESPN to be seen here in Kansas City, all over the United States, by millions of folks all over the world for this, an epic State Farm Home Run Derby. It's our privilege to return to the heartland. In 1973, you opened up Kauffman Stadium, and we had an all-star game right here. Well, it took 39 years, but we're back. So you folks behind home plate, you've been waiting a long time. You ready? And we're going to need your help all night over here at first base. Are you ready? Out there in right field. Are you guys ready? Come on. Let me hear you. How about the fountain? You guys over the fountain, are you ready to go? Left field, down the left field line, third base. Are you ready over here? Are you ready for some long ball? I thought so. We'll be hearing you all night, but first, to get us rolling here in Kansas City, from our stage right here at second base, performing their song, The Wind, from their brand new album, Uncaged, which comes out tomorrow, Ladies and gentlemen, the Zach Brown Band. There's a dial in Petersburg City where men love you. And a big copy scout brings an urban love by story, it's true. When I met you on the street that day, she let that rascal fly away like any chance I had to keep you. Like a northern. Someone's out there waiting for a sweet time to play to make a smile the way I always wanted to. Where the wind blows, baby, you can bet I'll be right out there. Hold on to my dear life, just like I always did. Close your eyes, baby, take a breath, say my name, and I'll be there. My love finds you anywhere, anywhere, my Give it up for the Zach Brown Band, ladies and gentlemen. And now, give it up for our eight sluggers tonight. We will start with the National League. The captain of the National League led the senior circuit in homers last year with 39. Sideline much of the first half this season. He is itching 
to lead his NL team to victory from the LA Dodgers, Matt Kemp. He once called Kauffman Stadium Hall, 1999 American League Rookie of the Year for your Kansas City Royals. Fifth All-Star start, first appearance in the Derby. From the St. Louis Cardinals, he's got 20 homers at the break. He leads the league with 65 RBIs, Carlos Beltran. He's hit 77 homers since the start of the 2010 season, 17 this year. The all-around force has won a batting title already from the Colorado Rockies, Carlos Gonzalez. This young superstar is the heart and soul of one of the surprise teams in baseball, the first place Pittsburgh Pirates. He's got 18 homers. His 362 average leads the big leagues. Batting average from the Pirates, Andrew McCutcheon. And now your home squad, the American League, the captain of the American League. Last year with his dad, Jose Cano pitching, provided one of the most memorable performances in the history of the State Farm Home Run Derby. 20 homers from the New York Yankees, defending champ Robinson Cano. Baseball's two-time reigning home run champ, the only player in baseball history to lead the majors in home runs at the All-Star break three straight years. From 2010 on, 124 home runs, 27 this year. From the Toronto Blue Jays, Jose Bautista. 120 minor league homers before bringing his power to the Angels lineup. He had 29 as a rookie last year, already has 22 this year. Mark Trumbo. He won the 2009 Home Run Derby down the road in St. Louis. Captain last year's National League team. This year, he'll take his cuts from the American League. 15 homers this year from the Detroit Tigers, Prince Fielder. Ladies and gentlemen, the participants in this year's 2012 State Farm Home Run Derby. And so, right along the third base side, it's my privilege to work again with two All-Stars. Nomar Garcia Perra and John Crook, good evening. This is always exciting, fellas. Oh, it's always a good time. You got the All-Stars getting their bats ready to hit that long ball, and everybody loves the long ball. They do. Yeah, I, I, it just, it, it amazes me what punishment they do to a baseball. I, I've dreamt of hitting balls that hard, never have. These guys are all going to do it. It's fun. Does experience count in something like this, Nomar, do you think? I think it does because once you experience the first time, you, re you realize how fatigued you actually get. You realize how you also have to pace yourself. Sometimes when you get that, the first time in it, you're, you're excited, the, the adrenaline's flowing, and you realize you need to slow down. You may not take as many pitches. You end up swinging at everything. Rather than just pacing yourself, let the ball get into your groove spot and let it fly. And, I, and that's where I think Robinson Cano might be at a little bit of a disadvantage after playing late last night, getting in early this morning, having to do the interviews and the press conferences, and then come out and take BP, set and wait, take another BP, and then come out here to compete. He might be a little wore out. He might be, but this guy is raring to go. That would be Matt Kemp, the, catch of the captain of the National League with our Buster Olney. Hadn't played lately, but he can't wait for tonight. Matt, you're on the disabled list. Now, you had a conversation with your manager, Don Mattingly, about participating in the all-star activities. Yeah. Tell me how that went. Oh, it went well. You know, he asked me if I want to do it. I said, sure. Uh, you know, this is something you don't get to quite do too, too much. And, uh, you know, I, I went for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have some fun tonight. Now, what have you learned in terms of strategy about participating in this? Uh, probably take a lot more pitches and, uh, you know, hit a lot more home runs than I did last year. So, uh, you know, last year was my first time. I wasn't uh, quite used to it. You know, hopefully this shot can do much better. Matt, thanks. Thank Pedro? Thanks, Buster. Robinson, we've heard the, re the reaction you received here. How difficult is it to pick just three players for this? Well, he's really tough. I mean, you know, there's a lot of guys that is not in, 
in the competition. But if it wasn't for me that I can pick more guys, I would have put not ball, just some, some of the guys are not in the, in the contest. You won this last year. What is the secret to succeeding? Secret is just have fun and enjoy it as much as you can. Jose Cano, usted fue el que lanzó el año pasado. ¿Qué tipo de presión hay cuando usted le está tirando a tu hijo? Fíjate, no hay presión. Eso ya nosotros lo hacemos por tantos años. Sé que no hay presión, a pesar de que tanta gente es lo mismo. Ya hay un, ya una persona que ha jugado mucho béisbol y eh, relajarnos y, y gozar este momento. I asked him how much pressure there is in pitching in the home run derby to your son. He said there's actually not that much pressure as you would think. It's just about throwing batting practice. It's just about having fun. It's something that we've done for a long time. Chris, back to you. All right, Pedro, thank you very much. And Buster, look forward to you visiting with all the All-Stars on both sides of uh, home plate tonight. That's always part of the fun. They have the kids out here, their family. They're just like... They're just like youngsters who in and on like everyone else. And our rules, if you haven't watched before or you maybe you've forgotten. So everybody gets to the plate. Swings that do not produce a home runner out. You can take as many pitches as you want. And so you get 10 outs. And the top four home run totals advance. In the second round, the totals carry over from the first round. So that uh, will influence the batting order, of course. And then our top two advance to the finals where we wipe out the total from the first two rounds, and then, again, 10 outs, player with the most home run will win. It's not that hard. Of course, the gold ball, we have that. Every gold ball home run hit State Farm will donate $18,000. State Farm also makes a $3,000 donation to the uh, Boys and Girls Club of America for all other home runs, so with nine outs, the gold ball is in play. You hit a bunch, you make a bunch for the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Now, some of the dimensions at Compton Stadium, redone beautifully a few years ago. Here's our distance tracker brought to you by Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn, in conjunction with MLB, helping to rebuild houses in Joplin, Missouri, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Visit HolidayInn.com for more information. So you'll see the distances here. After the home runs, will tell you how far from home they've landed. 332 down the line. At the fountains, the famous fountains, way back in there, 460. We had a pool last year. We get the fountains this year. Center field, if you hit that up there, that would be 463. Hello. The MLB fan cave, you might scatter a few beers, 452 feet. Left field foul pole. 334. And the baseball tonight set. And that's not that far, Crocky. Well, so I know why you're down here. Well, in harm's way. And since everyone else up there has gold gloves except Ravi, that's why I'm down here. <laughs> <laughs> so our lineup tonight brought to you by Taco Bell. Not George Taco Bell, but Taco Bell. Carlos Beltran will hit first for the visiting National League, if you will. Welcome home to him. Jose Batista will hit second. He have all the home runs, Joey Bats. Carlos Gonzalez, Mark Trumbo, Andrew McCutcheon, Prince Fielder, then the captains, Matt Kemp, Robbie Cano. Carlos Beltran began his major league career here for the Kansas City Royals. In 1998, he was Rookie of the Year in 99. He was traded to the Astros, and we remember the postseason that he had there was just stellar. And then, of course, uh, his first home run at Coughlin Stadium since the trade was just a few weeks ago. So here he is back in town, and he left with class. He's played with class. Switch hitter, so hitting lefty tonight is 20 home runs, which is second in the league. With Kansas City, he had 100 or more RBIs four times. Same for 20 more home runs. He's back. And this was one of the big questions for him. He did not know whether he was going to bat right-handed or left-handed until he was taking batting practice today. He said, whatever feels good today, I'm going to go with. And obviously, the left-handed side is what he's feeling. Uh, and everyone you talk to here, they, they, uh, even though they, it seems right he's hit more home runs, they say the ball carries better to right field than it does to left. Wind's kind of blowing in, though, from right field, it looks like. 
Well, it's interesting. I'm wondering if he might be the first one to maybe just switch sides in the middle of his round. If it's not feeling it from the left side, just go on the right. I wonder how that would. I wonder how that <laughs> would play out. That'd be odd. Why not? That'd be awesome. Just a little strategy there. I like it. I'm here. It could be Eddie Murray. It could Why be not? Jim Brown. Yeah. I, I'm no, not quite. I, I'm no switch hitter, but I wonder. You know, as much as a home run derby can take take so much out of you, maybe if you get fatigued from one side, maybe switch around and go hit from the other. I like the I'm thought. I'm just saying. What's that like? Running forward makes you tired. So when you get tired, you run backwards. <laughs> right. What? <laughs> That's why I'm not a switch hitter. There's one. This one has a shot. Gone. The first one on the board That's, for Carlos Beltran. Now he can breathe. Yeah. Now he can breathe. This one to right field, and this is a better shot. Gone. Remember in Houston, we said that postseason that he had four homers in the Atlanta series, four homers in the St. Louis series. And he's now got three homers here tonight in Kansas City. I don't think he's going to switch around to the other side right now. He looks now. pretty good right now. Yeah, he's locked yeah. in right here. He knows the pitches too. He's getting it elevated a little more. He's staying away from the ball down. Oh, we got out front of that yeah, one, it'll be foul. Gone, but foul. So that's an out. Remember, each batter gets 10 outs. Top four of eight move on to round number two. Goes to right center, and that won't have enough left. He hadn't he, made many outs. He had that one too much on the oh, line. I mean, wow. I mean, he's got four homers and, and six doubles right now. <laughs> 35 years of age from Puerto Rico. Having quite a year with the Cardinals. Gets under this one. This will draw some rain. Does it draw some fans? Ooh, yes, it yes, does. It yeah, does. that's a long one. Mm. That just kept carrying, didn't it? Wow. And some of those kids in the outfield think they had a beat on it. It was way gone. That's a shot, but that'll be an out. Well, but he's he's showing some patience. First derby, but a veteran in his first derby. Stepping out, and like Krucky said, he's letting some of those low balls go, looking for that ball up higher in the zone. And you watch when he's kicking the dirt out. You know, they water this right before they start, and you wonder. I, I know when I went up to him, I hated when it was wet because you felt like you were sticking. You see him kicking a lot of dirt off his spikes, and you wonder if that's a batting first or second was a disadvantage. Yeah, well, that'll be an out, his seventh out, and Buster, he's had quite a first half with the Cardinals. That's exactly right, and Matt Kemp actually used a teammate to help recruit him. He called Raphael for Cal, who, of course, used to play with the Dodgers, and asked him, do you think Beltran will do the home run derby? For Cal said, no, I really don't think so, but let me go check with him. <laughs> Did you think that was going to hit the wall? Wow. Oh, that's God. a sky ball. Back it goes to Fountain, right center. Baby. Back, Get on that foul. back, back, and gone. Oh. Just a single. Six Just homers, a lousy eight single. Outs. are pretty exciting shoes he has on, aren't they? I would say. I was wondering, yeah, the, what has silver more? gold with a silver toe? Well, I don't know if the gold ball is 18,000 a homer, but what happens? Do you get a different rate in those shoes? I, I, I don't know. I was wondering what has more gold on it, those shoes or the ball. And it'll be foul. So now comes the gold ball for the gold shoes. Hey, Crucky, I think you could see yourself in the tips of those no, shoes. Yeah, they're bright. Wow. I don't think I could pull those off. <laughs> that wasn't quite 93 Phillies wear. Well, it's never my wear. I don't know. There you go. There you go. There's beware in right field. Gone. 
pretty good round. Yeah. For your first derby, that's oh, a, yeah. this is a great round. I couldn't imagine. Well, he had one with the gold ball, first derby. He hit seven home runs. He is certainly in contention. His longest went 436. Good job by Carlos Beltran. This is 436, which kept on, just kept on going. 420. You met him out the distance of the baseball tonight, Seth? Right around there? 429, yeah, but that's, I mean, just, I, that one there was more of a line. Those other two were just majestic high balls. I mean, that's pretty good camera work, too. That looked like it was going to break something. And look at that. That's the extension you want. You see, that was the high pitch you were talking about, Kruk. He got that ball up in the zone. And it's a good feeling when you know you got yeah, it. And, and you can you can speak to this better than I with the home run, but you know, you, I don't know you were a high ball hitter like I was too, but you, even though he's a low ball hitter in a game, you prefer to elevate it, wouldn't you, in the competition like during, this? During batting practice you do is that elevated ball. You, although you say you're a high ball hitter, although it's different when it's coming 90 plus yeah. than that, but when it's coming at a batting practice speed, getting it elevated, it's easier to get it up in the air. And now 124 home runs in two and a half seasons. How's that? How's that rank now, with you? He's not going to get cheated. This is one of the more violent swings I've ever seen. And it's like that. Doesn't matter if it's 3-0, 0-2. He just that's the way he swings. So Jose Batista, 31 years of age, from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, playing for the Blue Jays, of course. His 27 homers this year ties Josh Hamilton for the major league lead and patient because he did not have a good debut in this event last year. No he's he's lasted longer already this time and, and he <laughs> did last year last year last year he swung at everything. His pitcher is Brian Abraham the advanced scouting and video coordinator Aye. of the Blue Jays and you can advance scout that one gone. He cut that too. You can see that a cut. That's a little high cut, boom. Bubba Watson high cut. Yeah. <laughs> well, that'll be a ground ball out. Boomer, you asked me at the beginning, does experience matter in this event? Well, I think you're seeing the patience from Jose Bautista after what he experienced last year. And just trying to get that that one pitch, not swinging at everything. We saw with that one, he got that one on the board. Now he's going to try to find that groove once again with that pitch up in the zone. Oh, oh. fooled Change by up. a batting practice. Oh, took something off of that one. Got out in front. Spoiled that 0-2 pitch. And this is how guys stay loose before it's their turn. Well, we should tell Mark, don't worry. We're going to have nice things to say. Don't you oh. worry. Tell you what. Oh, my. Oh, my. Goodness. Way Just back. This one. <laughs> I, wouldn't wow. mind, I wouldn't mind seeing Ravi Ravi get take one off the back or something. <laughs> he, he needs it. He, he deserves one of those. That'll be an out. So two homers thus far for the man that's hit more than anybody in the bigs the last two and a half seasons. Buster only he's uh, still trying to measure himself up there. That's exactly right. And you mentioned Brian Abraham is the batting practice pitcher. He works for the Blue Jays 27 years old a graduate of Holy Cross after Batista asked him to be the pitcher. He actually went out early one day to the mound in Chicago to practice throwing to a catcher because normally as no more and Crucky know batting practice pitchers throw into a cage and that's what Brian was told it's a big difference when there's no cage there guys. He's right I mean it's usually just a square that he's throwing to or a net with a cage around you and now yeah. the cage is gone and sometimes that little that little 
tarp back there in the back has a little circle on it that they kind of can use for an aiming. Right. And now it's nothing. This is a moonshot to left. Back it goes. Back, 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 and... It's gone. 402. That just kept scraping the sky. So two years ago, 54 home runs, becoming one of 26 players to ever hit 50 or more. We have two of those here with us tonight in our eight. Prince Fielder did it as well with the Brewers a few years ago. It was interesting right there. It looked like Jose Bautista. God. He actually asked the, the catcher to move on the inside part of the plate. And he was looking for more balls on the inner half. So the catcher moved to the inner half. And you see him nod when Abraham threw one on the inner half. He's like, yeah, that's where I'm looking for it. So he, they're aware of this. I mean, these guys take it seriously. These guys come out. They want to win. I think some guys are happy to be here, be a part of this event, and want to take it all in. And there's others, such as Bautista, who's been here before, ready to win this thing. Mark Trumbull warming up underneath. Does this have enough legs down the left field? It is back, and it is gone. And, and another thing, too, Norma, they don't want to be embarrassed. You know, you know, it's all fun, and let's have a good time and enjoy this, but you know, the last thing you want to do is go up and throw up a zero. Since 1920, all right, this is a pretty good list to be on. Back-to-back -back home run champs. He's the 12th. That, will it stay fair? Not quite. Here are the names. Babe Ruth, Jimmy Fox, Ted Williams, Ralph Kiner, Johnny Mize, Harmon Killebrew, Mike Schmidt, Cecil Fielder, Juan Gonzalez, Mark McGuire, who's here as part of the National League staff, Alex Rodriguez, Jose Bautista. Quite a list. Gold ball time, though, all of a sudden. Big Poppy knows he's won this thing a couple years ago in Anaheim. Said, let the younger guys do it this time. So here's Joey Bats, as they call him. Does he have a few in the bats? There's one. Oh, wow. man, that goal ball is back, 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 back. Way gone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That oh. missed that missed Ravi over there. That was a, over wow. his head. Yeah, missed him. We got to tell Joey Betts to aim a little better. Wow. Probably getting texts from Ravich right now. Why do you want me to get hit by a ball? Because <laughs> it'd be funny. That's why. Oh, my. oh man! Solid gold. Wow. That went a long way. Taking a break. David talking to him. The unofficial captain, right? What did he, I th what did he say? What was his quote? He goes, I, I think I'm going to come in as I'm the godfather. Right. Instead yeah, of, yes. I will, <laughs> I'll be the, not participate, but kind of be like the godfather. He just made him an offer he can't refuse. Yeah, and I don't know if there, if anything with that hat cam. Hey, he has been the face of the home run derby for the last few years. Yes. So. Probably just wanted to take time off. A couple long balls. Two thus far with the gold ball. Well, he's been the face of it because he's embraced this event. Yes. I mean. And there's another guy in this event, and Prince Fielder, who's also embraced it and wants to do it. You know, when they, a lot of these guys, when they were asked, obviously said, jumped at the opportunity. Well, he jumped at that pitch. He's got it in the jet stream. It's gone again. <laughs> I think Jose Bautista heard you, and I think he is aiming. Yeah, we like Joey Bats. <laughs> Ravi's run for cover. So Beltron began with seven, Batista now with eight. Oh man, make it nine! Back, 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 back! Gone! Saying, I picked the right guy. He lunged yeah, at that one, that. didn't he? Gone. Really? Out in front. 
That's the, <laughs> Boomer, that's the difference right there. Guys who can be out in front and still hit it that far. When you, even when you miss hit balls, they still carry. They just, just made eye contact with R.A. Dickey. He's like shaking his head. I said, throw him the knuckle ball. It could be a different story. <laughs> he said, I don't think so. <laughs> He's, ah, that's beautiful. Uh-oh. Oh, he's going to center field with that one. Gone! Got that one he got that underneath. One. What's the matter with him? Oh, no. <laughs> How about that? Once he got to those goal balls, he turned it on and put on a show. Jose Bautista with 11. Let's listen. You set up more in? Just set up in. Like, you're going to try to jam him. That's what I'm talking about. Once he set in, it made all the difference. You see that ball up in the zone and on the inside. And he was aiming for our boys out in left field. Hey, look at the leg kick, the timing. He always said, you know, I, I learned to get start earlier and get my foot down. But that foot was down there and he hit it off our set, which is kind of a special thing. So a couple over the 430 variety. And I thought this was the year of the pitcher. A rocking start here in Kansas City. Next, the superstar from the Rockies, Carlos Gonzalez. And then, the powerful young slugger from Orange County, Mark Trumbo. They're coming to bat at Kauffman Stadium. MLB at Home is presented by T-Mobile. Here to connect you to what matters most. Learn about T-Mobile's COVID-19 response at T-Mobile.com. State Farm Home Run Derby is presented by State Farm. For auto home life and banking, get to a better state. And in part by Holiday Inn. Stay you with the official partner of Major League Baseball Road Trips. And by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. That is the all-star build outside Compton Stadium, supported by State Farm, Holiday Inn, MLB, and the MLB Players Trust. Major League Baseball is proud to support Habitat for Humanity. We certainly remember the people of nearby Joplin, Missouri, and Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and tip our camp to their resilient spirit as they rebuild. Visit MLBcommunity.org and Habitat.org to learn how you can get involved today. State Farm and Major League Baseball once again teaming up to help the Boys and Girls Clubs of America tonight. Each of eight youngsters are matched with a player. The winner gets a $50,000 donation from State Farm for their home Boys and Girls Club. While everyone else gets a $10,000 donation. So we're marveling in the home run set. But how can you ignore the pitching in the first half? Five no hitters. Perfect game, the White Sox, Philip Umber. Jared Weaver, no no for the Angels. Johan Santana, the first in Mets history. Kevin Millwood, five Seattle relievers combined to blank the Dodgers. Then June 13th, AT&T Park. Matt Kane, perfect game. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. And starting the All-Star game, perfect <laughs> game. And here's Hartley. Yep, it's my little daughter Hartley. She's a year and a half, so a little Miss Perfect. <laughs> was she there that night? No, actually, she wasn't. Uh, she uh, luckily has actually worked out all right that she was at home with the, the babysitter, so we got to kind of take it all in and, and relax. Yep. As you, it's been a few uh, weeks since it, Matt. What is the memory more than anything else that you'll have forever? Um, it, Blanco's catch, I think, is the, the biggest thing. You know, Melky made a, made a good catch as well, but that – the catch that Blanco made, I think that at bat, uh, it definitely stands out in my most in my mind about everything. When that, when the ball left the bat, I mean, I heard your press conference after you asked <laughs> me, what were you doing there? I mean, yeah. what was he doing there? I have no idea. I mean, he, he, there, it didn't make any sense that he's there. Uh, you know, I look out and he's in, 
you know, I mean, he's in right center, really most, more of center field than he is anything when he catches that ball. And, and I have no idea. I mean, it was unbelievable that he just made the opportunity to hurt. When it left the bat, you, you're there, assuming yeah. this is oh, over. It's go oh, yeah, it's done. I thought it was done. When I looked over and I saw Pagan wasn't going to make it, I was like, oh, it's done. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's like he jumped out of the stands and came out and caught it. This is Carlos Gonzalez, who already on the board with one home run, a guy you know pretty well from your division, Matt. But yeah. You pitch, look, one hitters, lost one nothing games, you know, no hitters late. So you've had this kind of stuff late into games before. Was this different? Did you feel different? After the catch by Blanco, uh, I did. I, I felt just the, the whole time. I felt like I was kind of in a groove, and I and I stayed in that same that same groove the whole game. And uh, from the beginning of the game to the end of the game, I felt like I was in that same motion, and it, and uh, that was just a good feeling, confident feeling. Now, did you have a nickname before, and now after the perfect game, has that nickname changed? Uh, so I mean, you hear Mr. Perfect. All believe the time. it, yeah. They just constant Mr. Perfect. I'm anything from that. <laughs> So, uh, um, you know, that's a tough one, too, because you got nothing to say back to it. <laughs> so you just wear it, smile, and just get over with it. But that's all right. So the more fun, was it the perfect game or hitting the balls in the McCovey Cove? Uh, I saw you hitting golf balls. <laughs> I did hit one in there. Uh, definitely the perfect game. But it, it's, you know what? It is definitely really fun to be able to launch a golf ball from home plate into the water at that stadium. <laughs> Oh, Did you learn anything from Dustin Johnson, who also was hitting that night on the, on the tee there? Swing it hard, man. Swing it <laughs> hard. He, he gets after it. Well, Cargo's done that, but not quite. You Do hitting you, drivers? Yeah, and we were hitting a driver. It's, that's, that's, you got it up quick, though, huh? Yeah, pretty good. But I mean, what's our, we, we got almost 400 feet to the right field. Oh, that's so a we good got long, point. We, we got a good room to get it up. <laughs> yeah, it's not a typical right field, right? is it? No, it's perfect. So everyone should be. <laughs> everyone of them should be just like uh, that. I love it. We've got a picture here. Everyone in your division right. almost is except it's Colorado. Kind of true, yeah. Well, there's his 400, but it plays yeah, a little Yeah, it plays 210. Shorter. Yeah. Over half your outs that night, Matt, were strikeouts. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, it was just uh, we were locating well, and, and it, you know, the heater was just on point kind of. You know, I, I want to ask you how much studying. Now you're starting the All-Star game. Congratulations. Thank you. How much studying do you go to the book on the first? You know, you're going to see, well, maybe everybody once. Yeah. A lot of studying or? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I've, I've got to kind of, really, you got to play it by ear a little bit. I mean, you know what the guys kind of want to do, but I've got to uh, I've got to kind of go out there and just pitch my game a little bit. Are you studying these guys right now? And well, don't throw, down, don't throw it down and in about 65 to Bautista. <laughs> yeah. Not a good pitch. You don't have that one. No, no. Well, it might be in there. <laughs> Hensley's, well, Hensley's wow. been how, teaching me his ethos. How There's big? Cargo. Oh, how, my how, God. Ooh, is that, that in the fountain? No, Almost. just to the right of it. How big of an advantage is to have your catcher, Buster Posey, your regular season catcher, catching you here in the All-Star game? Oh, man, there's nothing better than that, to be able to look back there. and uh, I mean, it's going to feel, that'll feel like it's kind of normal. You know, it'll feel like kind of an interleague game with uh, everybody hitting 330 on the other side. But, I mean, it, it'll feel like an interleague game, kind of have your guy back there and calling a game. Well, out the year of the pitcher and plenty of them in the National League. Matt Cain, one of them. Pedro, you're with another who will pitch pretty early. Uh, yes, very much so, Chris. R.A. Dickey and Eli. A lot of talk has been made about Matt Cain starting the game and not you, R.A. How did you feel about that? Well, you know, I think as a competitor, I was a little bit disappointed. But, you know, Matty is incredibly worthy and, and uh, deserves it. Um, but I'll be coming in the game a little bit later, and hopefully they'll be, they'll be, uh, it'll be exciting. What is going on with the New York Mets this year? How have you guys been able to do what you've done? I think we've got good chemistry, you know, and we, we've stayed healthy for the most part. Um, our pitching's been well. Our starting pitching's been well. And we, well, I think we lead the league in two out, two out RBIs. So we've scored a lot of runs late in games with two outs, and we've, that's paid off for us. All right, thanks for joining us. Chris, back to you. Hi, right, Pedro. And Matt, you're going to just be setting him up for knuckleball. That, that's a really good strategy <laughs> by, by Tony La Russa. So you know this guy Carlos Gonzalez pretty well. Yeah. He can get on a tear here, can right. he? Right. Like we like said. It, yeah. He can get on a tear here, can he? A lot of these guys yeah. loving that gold ball right there. Yeah. Down to their final out. They're charitable. On. They're charitable. They're just waiting until it counts, and then they hit them all with that one. It's not a bad idea. No. They know where it's at. <laughs> How nervous was Buster worrying about catching a knuckleballer instead of you to start? He was panicking for a little <laughs> while. We were, we were kind of all over him. I said, have fun in catching that thing. Uh, but uh, I think he was all right with it. You know, just turn sideways and knock it down. That's all, all it is, right? He's, he said yeah. he's never caught one at no. any level. Then I spoke to Joe Girardi last week. He said he was catcher for, what, 20 years? At any level, he never caught one. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You're going to work that into your repertoire? Maybe not this year. Right. I was talking to R.A. about it. I was like, you can give me a couple pointers on it. Maybe we have to use it down the road. 
So we'll see if he can. Congratulations, Thank Matt, you. Congrats, on the start Matt. on the perfect game. Thank and you. you know what? This is one of the best guests we've ever had. <laughs> yeah. Right? Lee King. Right. Perfect. Doesn't even that, talk. That's it. Just <laughs> take it. make a good analyst, but <laughs> good guest. Maybe would. <laughs> yeah, maybe she would. Maybe that's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun these All right. days. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. <laughs> so Carlos Gonzalez did not get what he wanted. He got four. He's going to need some help. And now as we say goodbye to the starter, Matt Cain, his daughter Hartley, and San Francisco Giants, a half a game behind the Dodgers. And now comes one of the youngins, Mark Trumbo. I mean, he's not that young. We have Bryce Harper here. We have Mike Trouter in the All-Star game. But at 26, uh, this young man last year at 29 home runs. And then he's going to play first base. Oh, we sign Albert Pujols. Going to put you at third. Uh, Vernon Wells got hurt. He's played the outfield almost every day. He's got 22 home runs. And guess what? He hits monster shots, doesn't he, fellow? Mark Trumbull. Well, this year he's averaging the furthest home runs in the major leagues. He's averaging over 419 feet. Well, we asked Robinson Cano when he made his picks, and we asked him, you know, why would you why did you pick a guy like Mark Trumbo? And his and his answer was a question. Have you ever seen him take BP? And they say it's just prodigious. It, John Carlos Stanton like. Who is underwent the successful we understand arthroscopic knee surgery or else he would be in it for the National League McCutcheon replaced him. So Trumbull won a oh. Texas League home run derby a few years ago. That ball yes. had hair on that one. I was just <laughs> I was just shocked at that ball. That ball didn't go out. But wow it was a, such a line drive. Oh. Yeah, you're not looking forward to infield in with no. that, are you? You're right. He has been in a home run derby back in double A, and he won that one. I'm curious to see if he's just trying to pull everything. I mean, he can hit the ball just as hard to right field, center field, all over the field. Oh, oh wow! Goodbye! Oh, my goodness! <laughs> okay, it says 435 just because the wall stopped it. Wow. Ouch. That poor wall. Yeah, you really can't project it when it gets dead stopped like that. You know, that, this, that, this that wall has a dent. This man's serious. Prince Fielder while Trumbo tries to, well, he pops that one up. So halfway through with just one home run, he just Needs to take a breath. Grew up 10 minutes from, Anna, from Angel Stadium. Grew up an Angel fan playing for the Angels. I mean, it's, it's classic. As oh. is that. Oh my God. Back, back, oh my God. back, back, back. God! It didn't go down the slide? If it goes down the slide, that has to be extra. Yeah. That has to count for like that's, three. That's oh, Look at this thing still going Come up. On. Look at this thing. Back, back, back to center. God! Oh my God. Are you kidding oh. me? That was still going up. That's hard. That was like the golf oh shot you were talking gosh. to Matt Kane about. Hitting one. Yeah. Up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Now that way. was a low no ball. Way. Does that carry? Oh, yes. my goodness. Oh, forget it. Everybody is amazed at that one. All the players are amazed at that home run. <laughs> he's 6'4, 225 pounds. And he's got a. Man Mike Ashman, who pitches some batting practice for the Angels, former Cal Poly Pomona head coach. Oh, <laughs> wow, you don't coach that. Gone. So just real quickly. And that'll be foul. Uh, that, that, be careful. You know the booing of Robinson Cano. Why did you pick Trumbo instead of a Royal? This is your answer. That that line drive he hit the center field that stayed on the line and still went out to dead center. Gets under that one. Buster only putting on a show here. Yeah, no question about it. Now I'm here with his teammate Mike Trout. How's Mark Trumbo doing? Uh, he's doing great. You know he's got to. You know, take his time. You know, he's amped up a little bit. You know, it's pretty calm before the derby, man. I would have been shaking. I'm more nervous than he is right now. 
and uh, obviously, clearly, you can see he has a long list. Now, when you heard he was going to be in this competition, how did you think he would do? I thought he was going to win. You know, I watch his BP every day, and it's, uh, it's remarkable. So. Now, you're having a great rookie season. What's this been like for you? Uh, it's been an amazing run for us. You know, it's still halfway through the year, and uh, we got a second half to go. Just out there having fun and winning games. That's all that matters to us. Mike, thanks. And, guys, one thing that's interesting here on the American League side, David Ortiz is not the captain this year, but he's kind of acting like a coach. He's talking to the players and giving them advice on how to handle things. He said, hey, I want to give them my knowledge to help them win this thing. Well, he's a good teammate. That's for sure, Buster. Thank you. And, you know, once upon a time, and the Yankees had the M&M &M boys, Mandel and Maris. Oh, TNT boys, Trout and Trumbo for the Angels. He fought that one off, Nomar. Yeah, oh. almost. <laughs> Gold ball time. It's not supposed to go that far. No. When you get, on, got jammed, fought it off. Get him out. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh man! This one is on its way to Wichita! <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh Lord. A roofer! He hit it on the roof! The guest was 475. The guest. The guest. <laughs> Good way to put it. That got the people on their feet. Wow. One more, and he will have as many as Beltron. Does that stay up long enough? It does. Well, that's big because he's got as many as Beltron now, so at worst, if it comes down to them, he has another chance. I don't think he's done. Gold ball, no more. It's that gold ball. Everybody's very <laughs> charitable. That goes out. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the big time. Mark Trumbull. What a display. We had the long one on the roof that got everybody out of their seat, but this one gets the players out of their seat because this was such a low line drive to center field. And if that one didn't thrill you, this one sure does. I, this is just a, oh my gosh, that's a, I, I mean, you don't come in this competition, I'm going to hit one on the roof. Oh! I taught him, said David Wright. Wow. Look at, the, look at that chart. I mean, that's look more the, Look at the red one. Look at the one up. Oh, my goodness. You know what? Those sprays are more impressive than the That's fountains. what I'm saying. That one to the right. That one is so impressive to me that's over there at center field because it was down and low. And, oh, my goodness. Mark Trumbo with a little rumble here in Kansas City. Next up, the young star from the Steel City, Andrew McCutcheon, gets ready to take his hats in KC. T-Mobile and Sprint are joining forces to build America's largest and most reliable 5G network. With more towers and more engineers, you'll get the best 5G network and the best prices. Welcome to T-Mobile. Way back! Staten Island bound! Oh, goodness gracious! 28 homers!
Well, a night in uh, New York that nobody will forget, and certainly not this gentleman who's joined us at the set, Josh Hamilton for the Texas Rangers. That was a, I mean, do you still look back to that evening in New York and say, was that me? Yeah, that was a special moment, obviously. Uh, it's just something you never could imagine something like that could happen. Um, but you know what? When everybody talks about winning it, from the time I started it, it wasn't about winning. It was about putting on a show. And that was, that was fun. And you, you, know, you know that every time you go to New York, even though Yankees and Rangers are big-time rivals now, always a warm round of applause for that. It was like you did that for us. You know that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's strange and awesome at the same time because nobody does that for anybody. Yankees don't do that for anybody, right. especially fans. So. Have you ever had, like, some bad feelings for Justin Morneau? Because even though he won it that year, no, no one knows it except us because they told us today. <laughs> No, it's, uh, he was, we actually uh, just had the twins going, coming into the All-Star break, and uh, uh, we had some laughs about it. But, uh, you know, he, he was a good sport that night, and uh, hey, he won it fair and square. And uh, we need to change the method, though, man. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, hit, was, you hit 70, right. he hit 20, and he wins. I don't get it. And this is Andrew McCutcheon of the Pirates that's that, up the first place. That allows Pirates. Morneau to come in and say, yeah, hey, nice round, but I got the trophy <laughs> at home, right? <laughs> How you feeling? You just DH the last couple of games, right? Yeah, I feel good. I mean, I had a, had a little back spasm uh, the night before, um, so I figured I'd be safe and bring myself out of the game and, uh, you know, just come in and DH. So. Andrew McCutcheon. This one, what we talk about, the home run derby, just get that first one on the yeah. board. Andrew McCutcheon getting this first one. That's it. I just Man, he's like the pop. shoes. Yeah. yeah, he's a strong kid. He is. Hey, Josh, so take yeah. us back to Baltimore. Four two-run home runs. You know, only there have been only, what, 22 perfect games. Only 16 men have ever hit four homers in a game. It doesn't happen, you know. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, somebody asked me, they said, uh, home run derby or the four home run game? I still take the home run derby. Obviously, because it was in Yankee Stadium, but the four home run game, something that probably never do again, but it was. I just wouldn't count on uh, that. Yeah, no, you in, don't know. Locked in, you know, physically, swing, mentally. Um, everything was slowed down, everything was looking big. And that, that, that last home run you hit, the fourth yeah. one, were you thinking, hey, this would be kind of cool if I can get four? Or because I was so impressed that you went to center field with that home yeah. run. That was impressive to me. No, I, I honestly didn't think about it, but. You know, uh, O'Day threw the worst pitch of his career, you remember? Uh, so I've thanked him many times, and once again, I'm, thanks. Uh, Darren, appreciate it. <laughs> Tell us about the Texas Rangers, who you and the Yankees are neck and neck for best record. Teams uh, don't get off the mat that often and come back to the World Series after a loss, and especially the one against the Giants, okay, five games. Last year, against the Cardinals was crushing yeah. but here you guys are again what is it about this team that we don't know it's just the chemistry it's what everybody talks about you know it's the clubhouse when you got a clubhouse where guys enjoy each other uh, enjoy coming to the park um, spending time with each other love each other um, and really mean that uh, it makes going to the park fun uh, clubhouse fun and it carries on to the field and we have a lot of fun on the field but you can see it also helps when you win a lot. But all, it always helps. <laughs> yeah. now you, you get you get Darvish through the buyout, whatever that thing is they do. But I mean, you're starting pitching now. Is, I don't know what it's called. But you're. But I mean, you feel like this year you you have to win it. No. You don't have no. any feelings about that. No. I mean, get you, back there. Yeah, get back there. But I mean, if you feel like you have to do something more. More than likely, you're not going to even come mm. close to doing it. So you weren't trying to hit the fourth home run? No. You didn't have to do it? Absolutely not. <laughs> three is good. The three, I'd never done three before. <laughs> so I didn't even think about the fourth. <laughs> hey, I'm just alone for the ride, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. just trying to stay out of my own way. The problem is, problem is you're here alone for the ride, but you're driving it too. So. <laughs> uh, Andrew McCutcheon here. Got a couple on the board. Well, he's hitting too many line drives. Because yeah, he's a line drive he hitter. He's been that. hitting some off the wall. He was just added at the last moment when Stanton was hurt. Of course, he hit two home runs against the Giants yesterday. That was his warm-up. But did you think about this for four, five, six days, the home run derby? Andrew only had a day about an approach, Josh? Uh, not really. I mean, it was, uh, you know, because I'd always talked about, I always used to try to put shows on and bat in practice. 
Um, and then figuring out. I've got a chance. Here, yeah, it's got a good chance. The gold ball, no more. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, baby. I'm telling you, just start with the gold ball. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so I never thought, I never thought about it, but you know, I, I always wanted to be on a stage where I could have the ability to stop going to BP and trying to put on shows because people like watching me hit home runs. So the home run derby was my. I really enjoyed it. You know, it was one big time. You know, do it, get it over with, and then focus on what I had to do. You got that one. Okay. Staying uh, alive. Yeah, so it's cool, man. Just get it out of the way. Now I can just practice hitting line drives or not have BP at all. That's my favorite. <laughs> no BP. Stay out of the heat, Krugy. Oh, man. I don't know it's how you guys do it. It's not in Texas, is it? No, 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 no. I don't know how you guys do it. Uh, I mean, we I talked about CJ. wearing coolant things under our uniform. Yeah, but they leak. <laughs> <laughs> You're awful, man. <laughs> well, Andrew McCutcheon, who leads the majors in batting average at 362. The first place Pittsburgh Pirates, yep. and is it that I good know. to see? And the first place Texas Rangers and their outfield to get back out there healthy. Cool. We're going to see out here a couple innings tomorrow. Josh? <laughs> yeah. We're going to see out here a couple innings tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be, be out there. Yeah, I'll be out there. I'll be in left. Right on. What do right. I play? Do I play center or left? Wherever you want. How's that? Wherever they put me. Josh Hamilton. <laughs> Josh Hamilton, prodigious, as is this guy coming up. Thanks, Josh. Up next, he electrified St. Louis in 2009. Will Prince Fielder dominate the Show Me State again? And then, last year's National League home run champ, the captain, Matt Kemp. They take aim at the Fountains next. Welcome back to Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri. Aerial coverage is brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. And State Farm wants to help four charities get to a better state and help you get to the World Series. Log on to statefarm.com slash go to bat for details. I am now joined by Houston Street of the Houston yes. Action Team which is administered by the Players Trust and Volunteers of America. This is something that I know is near and dear to you. Why is this such an important cause? It's about people getting involved. It's about young kids uh, sharing their time with other people to help them improve their life. Yeah, there you go, buddy. This is my little one right here. Uh, yeah, he's getting me dirty, but no, it's, uh, I think it's important that, that and they're, they're volunteers. They're not, they're not getting paid to do this. They're doing this out of the, kindness of their heart, out of the, you know, the strength and the courage that they feel in their life and they want to share with other people. And uh, I, I've done a number of events and I, and I find it to be rewarding and inspiring. I mean, I feel like I go to those things and learn a lot from those kids and uh, want to do the same, try to do the same in my life. What can you tell us about an individual experience you've had with this? Uh, Colorado, 2009, Ryan Spilberg, Spielborgs and I uh, went to a home. Uh, for you know, elderly people who you know don't get maybe don't get a lot of visitors, don't have a lot of family, and uh, kids have volunteered their time, and uh, you just get to see the, the the glow and the joy on the people's faces because uh, they want to spend time, and, and maybe they don't have someone they can come visit, and uh, these kids volunteered their time, which got us to come out and had a, and we really had a fun day with it. You can find more again at actionteam.org. Chris, by the way, little Houston Street here is not Houston. His name is Ripken. So I think he's got a good chance if he, if he plays ball. Chris? You're going to play a lot of games, I can tell you that, Pedro. Thank you. And thank you, Houston. And now, man that won this uh, just three years ago, down the interstate in St. Louis when he was a member of the Milwaukee Brewers, and that is Prince Fielder hitting for the first time in this as an American leaguer as a member of the Detroit Tigers. And for him, guy that's hit 30 or more home runs the last five years, including 50 back in 2007, he and really the Tigers have not found their stride. Any, you think this sort of event, which I do, can have him start to, rather than, quote, ruin your swing, help his swing? This is his swing. Right. This is a swing in the game. This is a swing in BP. There, there's nothing. He's, he's doing nothing different in this competition than he does every single day. 
though, I'll tell you what I've really been impressed with them this year, though. Like you said, the Detroit Tigers are looking for something to really jumpstart their season and really take them off to be that team that we thought they were going to be at the beginning of the year because you know they have so much talent. That just keeps going. That's what, that's what power does. The ball that looks like you popped it up just keeps carrying out of the stadium. But he's really matured as a hitter. As much as he swings so ferociously and aggressively, I've also seen him this year take that ball the other way more. You know, they try that shift. He'll hit it the other way on that shift, especially with guys and runners in scoring position. I think he's maturing more as a hitter. And I think later on it'll make him a better home run hitter. And he's showing us how far he can hit the ball today. As you remember last year, he was... Uh the reason his home run, the biggest reason, which got the National League to win in the All-Star game, the St. Louis Cardinals had games six and seven at home. And we all remember what happened there in the World Series against Josh Hamilton and the Rangers. Oh, but this time he's hitting for the American League, and this one is way up there, a skyscraper! Oh! The films are going off! <laughs> I support National League. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Look at those. 454, the longest tonight. And he's only getting started. You made the point earlier, like Big Poppy, he's, of course, not as old as Big Poppy, but a veteran, a veteran of this event, he's taking it to heart no more. I bet you... Before the season starts, he's asking, who's going to be the captain of the home run derby? Because I want to <laughs> make sure they have my name floating around because he would jump at the opportunity every single time. He really loves this event and embraces it. Yeah, Buster only. Uh, this guy sees him every day. That's exactly right. And when that ball went in the water, Justin Verlander was standing here and you yelled out, you get to watch this every day with Prince Fielder and Miguel Cabrera in batting practice. What's that like? It's like watching home run derby every day. You know, I'm standing out there in the outfield watching balls just fly uh, so far. So it's, uh, it's fun to watch it. I'm rooting for my boy. There's another one. Get up. <laughs> I see this every day, man. It's a treat to watch. Now, you found out last night that you're starting the, for the American League in the All-Star game. Tell me how you found out. Uh, I found out when I got, to the, uh, when I got here to the hotel uh, I guess uh, skipper Ron Washington called Leland, but uh, he didn't want to tell me uh, a couple days before. He, <laughs> I think he was joking around saying I'd get nervous. So, uh, you know, it's a nice surprise, and I'm definitely excited to go. Now, Justin, you're notoriously competitive. How would you do in a home run derby? I, well, I took a picture with the, with the home run derby trophy. I don't know if you've ever seen my BP, but I got some pop. So, I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure I'd do well. There you, go, there you go, guys. Something to look forward to in 2013. Uh -oh. Gosh, I love yeah. it. We got we got Matt Cain saying that every every fence should be over 400 feet from a pitcher, asking that like in San Francisco. And now we have a pitcher saying he'd win a home run derby contest. Really? Or he'd do really well in the home run derby. Oh, pitchers, got to love them. No? Well, got to love them. Get to the World Series and maybe we'll see <laughs> right. Verlander, right? That's right. Pap Papelbon just walked by and he, he bet me 100 bucks that Prince wins it. He, said you, can have, he said you can have whoever you want. I, I got Prince. That's pretty good. I might take Batista. I might change. I might change up. I might have to take Batista. How many's he got? Ten. He's got eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Maybe you're gonna, you're gonna change it up. Yeah. Oh, I gotta okay. tell him. I gotta find him first. Oof. Gosh. So as prodigious as those homers have been, and there's the National League captain Matt Kemp. Good to see him back swinging a bat, which we'll do tonight. They hadn't uh, played in the majors since the end of May. Prince got to get going. That won't make it. So eight outs. Jose Batista has 11. Beltran and Trumbo with seven. Carlos Gonzalez, Andrew McCutcheon with four, as does Prince Fielder. So next homer will move him ahead of. Well, two guys. This is a long way up, but I don't think so. So now comes the gold ball, of which 12 of the 33 homers, well, going into Prince, have been gold ball home runs. So let's see.
Sandy Guerrero, the minor league hitting coach of the Brewers. Pitched him before, and uh, even though he's a Tiger now, friendships remain friendships, and uh, hoping to lay it in there for him. Oh, oh he did that yes. one. That gold ball is way gone. Oh, oh my oh. God. <laughs> Number five for Prince. Another gold ball homer, the 13th. Each one of those worth $18,000 to charity. Impatient. Ah, not quite. So Prince Fielder, who won it three years ago, has five. He'll need some help. But the ones that went out had us ooing and eyeing. Get to slow this down and look at that swing. I mean, the, the torque he gets out of his back. And, and it doesn't matter if it's 65 or 95. That's the same exact swing he takes in games. Ah, oh, are. You ever hit one in a fountain? No. Me either. No. Then again, I'm not that strong. I have never hit, hit a ball it over there. Now look at him. He know he got that too. Look at the follow through. Wow. Probably wouldn't get a good jump to first base on that follow through, but how about that spray? It's almost out of the screen. He's hit the longest two tonight, 454 and 448. But he's gonna need some help because it's currently in the uh, fourth place but we got two guys to come the captains Matt Kemp Dodgers defending champ Robbie Cano Yankee so we heard Buster with uh, Matt Kemp before you know hamstring injury he's played seven games in the minors but uh, him in the home run derby and here the all-star game. This is first time Dodger fans or anyone will see him play in a major league uniform since the end of May with that hammy. I really don't have a problem with him hitting in this home run derby. Well, he asked me coming in. He said, he said, hey, how come you don't want me to hit in this? I said, I, I said, I, I'd rather see you play the second half. And he said, he said, but I'm all good. It's going to be good. Don't worry about it. See? And he's been playing games already. I mean, let's face it. Yeah, he's had he's some been games. Hitting a he's lot. Been, and he's been hit. He's been hitting. The, talked to his trainer. And she told me he's been hitting five days after he, you know, hurt his hamstring. So he's been swinging the bat. He's already, you know, he's been doing that. This is, you know, for him. He's. It's quite an honor to be the captain, and he's enjoying it. And we'll see how he does. The only thing I worry about with his hamstring is the start and stop of the whole thing. You know, the the. You know, let's say he advances to the next round. Now he sits for another 20, 30 minutes before he has to hit again. And that, that's the only thing I worry about. Is he stretching properly enough? I'm sure he is. I think I'd be more concerned if it was a back problem than his hamstring. Just for me. You but, never pulled but, a hamstring hit? Oh, have I pulled a ham? <laughs> not, ha not hitting, but <laughs> running for sure. He's trying to find his stride. Matt Kemp has robbed Flippo. Bullpen catcher and batting practice pitcher at the Dodgers pitching to him. Second time an All Star. Flippo's done this before. Yep. And you know when I was with the Dodgers, he threw the best batting practice. I mean, everybody was lining up and going, "Okay, can I be in his group? I want him to throw batting practice." I mean, he's a true gentleman of the game and and a great batting practice thrower and just a guy who's always there for all the pitchers out there in the bullpen. And you never know how important that is as a as a hitter to have good BP. It's, it's crucial, and it's a difficult thing to do. If you ever coach in the minor leagues, you had to throw it every day. Oh my gosh, it is a it's an art. And he is truly available to throw every single day. Oh man, almost. We have a, we've already we've seen a couple of guys hit the wall, but not just hit the wall. They hit the wall hard. Yeah, like they're trying to go through the wall the way these guys swing. Well, back. Trumbo's almost went oh, through the wall. Well, that he, was a different. He wall. chose a different wall. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the one all the way in the back. 
So Matt Kemp at 27 is signed at the Dodgers through 2019 for Magic Johnson's club. He's actually recruited by Oklahoma once upon a time uh, to, to play basketball, but I think he made the right choice. So 27, he's a young star, if you will, and also wearing those gold shoes. But in a moment, we're going to visit with a really young star. Hadn't had his 20th birthday yet. He keeps getting younger and younger, and that'd be Bryce Harper with us now. Bryce, first season in the major leagues, you're in your first All-Star game. What has this all been like for you? Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's unbelievable. You know, I think uh, just trying to come in here and just trying to enjoy myself as much as I can for the first time I've been here and, you know, being all around all the great players in the game and, uh, you know, just trying to take it all in with the family and, you know, it's just an exciting time for me and them and, uh, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, really take it all in. What has been the biggest difference in your elevation to the major leagues compared to every other level you've been at? Um, I'm not sure, you know, just, uh, you know, trying to come into the, you know, the game every single day and really just try to enjoy myself and not, uh, not get too high, not get too low, stay as even kill as I can and not worry about anything around me. Um, you know, I think having the tr transition, it's, uh, it was pretty, it was pretty good because, you know, the guys inside the clubhouse that I have, you know, Zimmerman, Worth, and Kill, guys that have been in my situation and, uh, you know, it's just, it's great to have them in the clubhouse. It's made this, uh, you know, a lot more fun and a lot, a lot easier, definitely. Bryce, who, who was supposed to be graduating from high school just one year ago, and here he is in the All-Star game. Chris, back to you. It's quite an education, huh, Pedro? <laughs> no doubt. Well, Matt Kemp is back in the, the big league uniform, but trying to get off the schneid here. Well, last year he hit two home runs in the Derby, and both of those were the goal balls as he made nine straight outs, and here he is. He did this again, so let's see if he gets more of a groove now that the goal ball's back into well, play. The gold shoes. There's the gold shoes, the goal ball. Here it is. Come on, Matt. Thirty-nine homers a year ago. Second in the MVP voting to Ryan Braun, his teammate here in the National League team for the Brewers. Here he goes, gold ball to deep center. Back it goes, back, 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 go. Hey, baby. That's where he needs to go. This is, it's, um, for Matt Kemp, his strength, which is so unbelievable, is to center field and to right center the opposite way. And he's happy. He's like, I got on the board, but he's trying to pull everything and. This guy stays through the ball better than anybody in the big leagues. And that's that might be what put him at a disadvantage in this home run derby because his, it seems like his in the air power is to center and right center. And when he pulls it's more of that snap hook diving line drives type of thing. Well he gave it a shot you got to give him credit. Give him a lot of credit goes out there and like we said staying in that center field and right center. I wonder if you change the derby a little bit and give extra points if guys can yeah. go the other way right. Yeah, it should be a point system right That'd be nice. <laughs> a point system. What, what will the Russian judge give? That's the question. Robbie Cano the defending champ still to come in round number one. Next up, it's time to see if Robinson Cano and his father Jose can again bring their magic from the backyard to the big stage. The State Farm Home Run Derby continues. The best home runs aren't solo shots. The shape as a cherished moment between fathers and sons. Enjoy as baseball was meant to be, together. I love you, Dad. What a great moment last year. Robbie Cano, second baseman of the Yankees, got 20 homers this year. Winning the home run derby against the Red Sox, Adrian Gonzalez by one with his dad, Jose Cano pitching. I mean, so look they all want to see their home players. I understand that. We went through this in Arizona last year when Prince Fielder was booed. By the way he won the All-Star game. Right he won the All-Star. He was yeah he was the MVP of the All-Star yeah. game. So maybe maybe Cano will be the MVP tomorrow. So here's Robbie Cano who's the captain of the home American League and he needs 
five to give himself at least a chance. Jose Batista with 11, Beltran and Trumbull with seven, Prince Fielder with five, which means Cargo, McCutcheon, and Matt Kemp are eliminated. And I'm just looking at that list at the top, so the three guys that he did pick are at the top of that list right yeah, I there. Mean, so it's, uh, there's whatever. a reason, and there's a reason why he picked those guys. And, and it's a difficult choice. It's a difficult, it's a lot of pressure you put on these captains. And so I hopefully the fact, I, I saw the fans get on their feet when Trumbo hit that ball on the roof. Yeah, but they didn't add a right, to say, well, they didn't well, wait a minute. Butler. Exactly. That, <laughs> so they were all on their feet when he was hitting it through the wall and on the roof. So dad to son. 29-year-old Robinson Cano. First name for Jackie Robinson, hence he wears the number 24. Jackie's 42 inverted. And fitting that we bring that up here in the home of the Negro Leagues Museum, Kansas City. And <laughs> he's laughing. You know, it, it, you would have to imagine this would bother so He plays for the Yankees. Pretty much everywhere he goes, they hate him outside of New York. <laughs> right. Just goes with the territory of being a New York Yankee. When your team has been that great for that long, not many people like you. But I, I got a feeling though, he, this might be the thing. You know, we talked about his fatigue, the late game, the travel. This could be one of these things where it's like you know, one of those big. You know, I'll show you because he's a showman. He loves this stage. How's the love, Nomar? How's the love? <laughs> he fouls off a couple. They love seeing him foul the ball. You know, he can change this around. Well, they've just shown Billy Butler the Royal All-Star, and of course he's getting cheered like he's George Brett. I mean, let's not forget the show that he put on last yep. year. There you go. And it was... Home runs like that. Just to finish the, the Negro Leagues Museum, which opened here in 1990 with Buck O'Neill, the late Buck O'Neill, the gentleman, the driving force behind it. Speaking of driving force, it's back, back, and that's quickly, oh, not quite. Uh, probably the greatest team in Negro League history was here in Kansas City, the Kansas City Monarchs, for whom Satchel Page starred. Bernie Banks played some, and yes, Jackie Robinson played for a year. Now here's David Ortiz to go out to talk with Robbie Cano. I wonder if he's got a lot of pressure on his dad. His dad's really throwing it in there right now. He's got some pretty good shutter. Yeah, he does. Now he softens it up a little bit. I think he's been throwing it a little bit too hard. He gets under that, and that's not going to carry. So the captain's having a rough time of this. <laughs> Man, when it misses by six feet, this is, as Rodney Dangerfield would say, I tell you, it's a rough room. Crocky, I wonder if you're talking. I wonder if that late game is effective. Of course it is. You know, you have an excellent point. Time that game in, 12:30. Well, yeah, after 12, and then he got here at five in the morning and had to go through all the press conferences and the media stuff and the whole. And now we're talking to his dad. Now, I, I mean, his dad is all business. I'd be careful with what I say. All right, right, come on. Curtis Granderson, CC Sabathia, the Yankees try to help their second baseman. Oh, 
Phil Butler again on the, <laughs> on the scoreboard. I mean, it is humorous, except that it's they're having fun, but it's at Robbie's expense. He's patient with that. His dad, who pitched a little with the Houston Astros back in the day, that won't get done. He's rooting him on. Got gold shoes no more. Here's the gold ball. Hey, look, the Yankees and the Royals back in the 70s, uh, they went at it pretty good. So they have no problem booing a Yankee in this park generally. Gold ball magic? Not quite. So we will not have a defending champ, Robbie Cano with a goose egg. And here goes Dad over with a hug. Don't say you're gonna give it to Billy and not give it to him. I don't know what to say, no more. So that means with the captains going one and zero, Kemp and Cano, Prince Fielder survives with five. Jose Batista with 11 long in this thing. Carlos Beltran, who started it off, and Mark Trumbo, and Prince Fielder. Those are your four. Carl Ravage, fans can be tough. Yeah, they certainly can, and not what you expect uh, in the heartland. You didn't expect a zero from Cano, and you certainly didn't expect the behavior to at least last that long during the round for Bautista. Yeah, and that, for uh, Cano, for I Cano, say. it was kind of ugly. You know, that's not what this whole thing is about. It's supposed to be positive. You kind of hate to see that, Terry. Well, you know, they're, they're, they're having fun with it, and they I think Robbie pride. Cano. I get it. He'll, he'll get over Let's it. Let's talk about the positive, though. How about Mark Trumbo? Laser how about, shots. How about some of those balls? We're sitting behind the set and hit a ball on top of the roof. Unbelievable. Two, two things for me. Jose Bautista looks good. Yeah. And the strength of Mark Trumbo, like you're saying? Yeah. Impressive. Strong. Three impressive. American League guys advance, one from the National League. Second round coming up in a moment here. It's the Home Run Derby 2012. He jumped at that pitch. Oh! Wow! Goodbye! Back, 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 back! Gone! Oh, man! Solid goal! MLB Priceless Moments, presented by MasterCard. Gives the ball to the kid. <laughs> How awesome is that? Jimenez in the air. Gone! And there's one happy fan. That's why we love this great game and the great players in it. The moment. That's amazing. That is amazing. There big hug. <laughs> a big Josh Bell fan. I wish you a long and happy life together. Mike Trout, as usual, signing autographs for some young fans. And the reaction, priceless. We are down to four finalists for the ESPY's best play. Go to ESPN.com slash ESPYs to vote and watch the ESPYs on Wednesday to see who wins. Well, that's always fun in Los Angeles, 9 Eastern, 6 on the West Coast. We got a pregame show. We got our top 10 plays of the year. We got lots of stuff going. Some of these ball players will be there as well, including, I know, the skipper of the National League, Tony LaRusso, on his way. State Farm gives you the chance to go to bat for what matters most to you. StateFarm.com slash Go to bat. The fountains flying, especially when the ball goes in there. That was impressive. We've it's had a few floaters today. A, flo a floater. <laughs> a root beer floater. Right. And so now we're down to four. We, the batting order is those from the fewest to the most. So Prince Fielder with five. Carlos Beltran, seven. Mark Trumbo, seven. Jose Bautista, 11. The numbers carry over from round one, so Prince needs a big round. Now, look, some of us barely made it. I picked Prince Fielder, came in through the bathroom window. Right. However, 
you guys are you're gone. Yeah, yeah. I had Cano, and and I think fatigue got to him. And, and my boy Crucky over here, pick Cargo. Yeah. Oh. Cargo got out to a good start. He did. He did. That's all right. He'll he'll, he'll win one for it's over. So here we go with Prince oh, Fielder. Look at that one. That looked like a pop up. <laughs> that they go in the fountain. Went, See? It did go in the fountain, but this gosh, this one just keeps carrying. That's what Verlander was talking about. He gets to witness this all the time at batting practice. And yes, we're going to be joined in a moment by the all time great Royal and the Hall of Famer, George Brett. As Prince Fielder pops this one up. So remember, he started with five. He needs a big show here. Well, you can see the total there on the right with six because the first, the round one and this round, they combine the, the top two yep. of these two rounds going to the final. And Bautista already has 11. That one to dead center field. It goes back, 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 and oh yeah, a goodness. splasher. Everybody in the pool. And we joined uh, right now by a man that's seen these fountains for a few years. The vice president of baseball operations for the Kansas City Royals. For a, <laughs> you laugh, not me. <laughs> the forever young George Brett. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Nice to be in your hometown. Yeah. You're well, adopted you, hometown. You come into Kansas City, you don't even call. I know. I, I, I fellow West Virginian. You come into my right. hometown, you don't even call. That's right. The best, the best hitting West Virginian in, in the history of the state. George Brett, born. Where were you been hunting? Wheeling. Wheeling. That's right. Wheeling. Where's that at? To the. I don't even know. I, I, I was it's, born there. We moved to California when I was one. Yeah, it's in the east. It, <laughs> it's, it's never been back. It's on the top panhandle. I heard it's a beautiful place. It though. is. Great golf courses, yeah, too, just I in heard. case you want to know. Prince Fielder. Does that have enough? No, not quite. George, you look great. You managed yesterday, huh? I managed the future game. It was so much fun. It really was. And you know what? You got this wave of young talent now, Harper. Trout, all these guys in the big leagues, Moustakis, you know, Hosmer, they're all over the place. Wait till you see the next wave coming in. There are some Games players in good down hands, there. It's it? in great hands. That's a good I thing. I was really, really impressed. What was Not what? only by the USA team, but by the world team. Was it? What was so impressive? Was it there? Just their size, their speed, their skill? Well, their... no more. Put yourself when you're 20 years old, 21 years old, playing in an all-star game in a major league stadium with 40,000 people there. This game was sold out yesterday. Right. You'd have the little poopies in your pants, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> These guys didn't have it. Right. They didn't uh, have it. Wow. They went out there and played. I mean, it was really, really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> You Very can say that on the ESPN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yes, you, you can. can. Yes, you I can. I thought you could. You, you can. If it was CBS, NBC, I wouldn't have said it. Well, yeah. yeah. You, you can. Short, yeah. We've been, we've been, you and I have been talking on this station for a few yeah. years now, haven't we? Yes. You look great. I feel good. I, I really are you feel tired? Good. Mike Swanson, the PR guy for the Royals, told me a couple weeks ago, he's, I was out there at your statue doing something for yeah. our show. Look and at uh, this shot by Prince. Way back. It's another yeah, splasher. Yeah. He's not. He's not pulling the ball. Center field splasher. Out. Center field. George, foul. he almost hit you. That's fine. I hope somebody does. <laughs> but he told me. He said. He said. Wait till you see George when you get here. He said he's going to look like an old rag doll, man. They're well, I'll tell you crazy. what. It's been crazy. It really has. It's when fun, they asked though, me huh? to be ambassador to the All Star Game here, I never knew they had an ambassador to an All Star Game. You remember playing in All Star Games? What would you do? You'd fly in Saturday, practice Monday. Uh, have the commissioner's lunch on Tuesday, play the game and fly, fly to your respective city. This thing started Friday. Actually, Thursday for me, I did a walkthrough at FanFest, a hard hat walkthrough, and I've been up every day at 6 o'clock, getting home at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock every day for the last three days. And it's, uh, I mean, this thing's huge for our city. It really is. What's it, what was it like to play here? Look, the Royals haven't been in the playoffs since you guys won the series in 85, but for, there are a lot of younger people watching this that do not. Well, now, well, this not. Is, how's this, boys? This is yes. what it's like. Yes. Mitch Ripp. Yes. 
Meet Mitch Ribs. That's why he's a Hall of Famer. That's right it. there. I thought you guys might be well, hungry. We didn't have anybody else bring food to the set. No, Thank you. <laughs> <We're laughs> <team faster. laughs> you awesome. got to come on. <laughs> we just had your normal run of the mill All Star. We got a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Meanwhile, look at these shots oh, by yeah. Prince. Way back. Man, that one's almost to Omaha. That's the wrong direction. That'd be St. Louis. Oh, you're going to call it. You know what? That would be St. Louis. I bring you on the set as a longtime friend. Yeah. You're going to show me up because I don't call you. We're going to reinduct him. You guys have a lot of fun doing this. Well, story. we do. Now, George, tell a, a lot of younger folks that don't remember the Royals every year postseason, the great series with the Yankees, the World Series in, in, in 80 with the Phillies that didn't work, and, of course, the comeback against Toronto. 85 the series against the Cardinals which you guys won what was it like to play here with that team with this fan in this park well we didn't have all the bleachers out in the outfield okay it, the stadium basically ended the seats basically ended 20 feet past the foul lines and the rest was uh, bullpens uh, water fountains and a big grand green grass yard out there in left center field left field uh, we averaged 30,000 a game uh, April's terrible weather here school's still in session but every Thursday we would sell out in the summer, every Friday sold out, every Sunday sold out, and we'd get about 30,000 on, on Sunday. And it was a destination for people in the Oklahoma, Iowa area, you know, Nebraska area. Kind of where that ball's going? Uh, no, St. no, St. Louis well, that's, again. That's, that's, Never mind. That's, well, we get people in Columbia, Columbia, you know? But it was a Correct, destination. I remember, I remember driving out of the ballpark here, and you'd see just as many out-of-state license plates as you'd see in-state. Kansas, Missouri, yeah. there would be people, and they'd come here, and this was their destination. They would go to the Royal Game Friday. They'd go to the Plaza Shopping on Saturday. They'd come to the Royal Game Saturday night. They'd go to Worlds of Fun or Oceans of Fun, uh, big amusement parks owned by Lamar Hunt, and then they would go back to the respective city. But this was their annual vacation, coming to Kansas City and going to Royal Games, and it was it was a lot of fun. It really was. We were competitive, made the playoffs seven out of ten years. Unfortunately, we wow. kept going up against the Yankees and, and had a tough time beating them. But uh, we finally beat them in 80. Phillies had a great team. They beat us. And then 85, we did it all. And it was uh, something special. Will we see, you're the last one, not the last, but when you hit 390 in, in 1980, since Ted Williams, as you know, it's the highest average. No more. Year. You were up there for a while I one was, year. Yeah, I was well, back. I hit. I ended up 372. Yeah. What year there. was that? That was back in uh, 99. How how long were you over I'm the 400 sorry, in two, mark? In 2000. I'm sorry. How long were you over the, the 400 I was. Mark? I remember looking up at at the end of July. I remember this specifically because I remember being on deck and I didn't look at my average. And I was. Found, I looked up and it showed 398. It was toward the end of July. I was at 398. And I remember a fan yelling at me behind while I was on deck, Nomar, 398, let's go. And he used a couple of other church words, and I was like, man, yeah. really? I'm th the minute I patted myself on the back thinking, man, 398 is pretty good, you get humbled really quick. Right, yeah, go, I got home that year after hitting 390. Uh, and I, I lived here year-round then. And I went home for Thanksgiving for some reason, and my whole family was there. And the first thing my father said to me when I walked in the house, he said, you mean to tell me you couldn't have got five more hits? <laughs> <laughs> Those are the Brett Dad and boys. Look at, oh, oh that almost, the question is, well, as Prince, hey, that, by the way, we're having a good time with one of the great hitters of all time. That was quite a show. He had five, and he hit 11 this round, and he has a chance. Prince does. So how about this swing? I mean, these are skyscrapers, George. Look at this. I mean, he was just hitting every part of the fountain. The center field part of the fountain, the right center part of the fountain, the right field part of the fountain. He was taking advantage of making all of those baseballs wet. Look at the splash. Wow. I think that's a that's a mistake, Crucky. You probably agree that people try to pull the ball too much. These guys yeah. are strong enough well, to hit I, him out of center well, field. Well, Matt Kemp, when you wow. look at Matt Kemp's power, his power is to center and right center. The majority of Joey Votto, the majority oh. of the oh. home runs are the oh. other way. Stay and, behind it, swing through yeah. it. Look at and that power. And so big and strong, George. They get, you know, they miss hit balls the other way and hit it out. Yeah, but in a home run derby contest, you try to pull everything. Yeah. He and has the, the seven longest, the seven longest tonight. And this round he had They were longer than some of Batista's that were going off the Hall of Fame building out there in left field. Yeah. Yeah. Those were longer. Trumbo, yeah. Trumbo. Trumbo. The Trumbo hit that one over well, there, yeah. I got wow. a quick quick question for you, George. Will we see a 400 hitter again? I don't no think hard? so. I don't think so. 
I think the game is too specialized right now. A lot of starters just go five innings. Then they bring in a guy to pitch the sixth, seventh. Then they had the, the setup guy in the eighth. Then they got the closer. Closer's making ten, fifteen million dollars. You know, I think it's going to be a lot tougher. I, and taking nothing away from Ted Williams, taking nothing away from him, he was a great hitter. It's tougher now than it was back then. Now, when you guys won the World well, do you remember this? Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, that was that, uh, third uh, that game was, of the playoffs. That was off Goose Gossage. It came in at 98, and it went out that about 105. Goose. That was off Goose. Of course, this There's is plenty of times I walked back the dugout, and like you, and like you, walking back the dugout after facing him. Right. But, well, we know what this is, the pine yeah. tar home run. What was I going to do? Timmy McClellan, 6'6", 250. <laughs> Shin guards, chest protector, bat in one hand, helmet in the other. What am I going to do to him? Crucky. What just would what you have you done did. to him? Just what you did. Run up uh, and hope then stop and back you. up. I hope someone grabs you. <laughs> Keep me off of him. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. I was you the really guy to roll speed with four guys, by the way. Yeah. That was really good speed. That was a young George Brown. You had a good first I was uh, 19, when was that, 83, so I was 30 years old then. Hey, you talk about these young kids in the game today. When you guys won the World Series, you had a pretty young pitcher, didn't you, that yeah. dialed it up? Saber saves? Yeah, saves. That was, yeah. He was nasty. Saves, Gooby. Wow. We had saves, uh, Gooby. Uh, we had Jackson, Lebron. DJ, yeah. Yeah. This young man, Carlos Beltran, of course, began his oh. career in Kansas City. One I of love the many. this guy. I know you do. What about him? Look, obviously, he's a really good player. Mm -hmm. And the Royals cannot keep financially most of their young players if they excel like after five six years yeah that's what about very difficult him impressed you more than anything else i think his work ethic and his willingness to listen and try things and and to, to try to apply it in practice to try to apply it in spring training a lot of times you try to give advice to people and they th take it as criticism they're not criticizing them we're trying to make them better and when carlos signed as a young i think 17 or 18 year old kid out of puerto rico uh, he was very willing to learn and listen and ask questions and do everything, uh, try everything that we were trying to do. And it was uh, just a very special guy, a switch hitter. He could run, throw. He could do it all, five-tool guy. And I'd just love to see what would happen sometime if we were able to keep a Beltran, a die. Uh, some of the guys right. that we get rid of after five or six years because economically we can't keep them. You know, it just doesn't make economical sense for the owner of this ball club to keep them. I'd love to see what would happen if a Beltran played here 15 years to see what he could do in this ballpark. Just a great guy, and he's a great guy off the field, too. I mean, he's just one of my favorite players, no matter what team he plays on every day. You know, when you first get out of the game no more, you always kind of look at your friends uh, that you played against, guys you played with, and you follow their career. Right. Right now, I, don't think, I think there's one guy playing today that was playing when I was still playing, Omar Vizquel. Not really worth following because he doesn't play every day. Right. And 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 uh, but I still pick up the paper every day and I regardless if he's with the Cardinals if he's with the Mets if he's with the right. Astros I pick up and the first thing I do is I look and see what Carlos Beltran did every day in the paper. Well I'll tell you if he listens to this and hears that you're looking at what he's doing every day. No, I bet every you day. he's just tickled pink I to talked say to George Brett gets to see. No I, when, when, the, when the Cardinals were in when the Cardinals were in town right before the. Uh, Right before the uh, hey, uh, it, it, All Star break, food, food I went over everybody. and visited him for the first time since he's You're been in. traded. First time since I've seen him, and just told him how proud I was of him, of, of not only a ball player, but the way he's conducted himself as a Major League Baseball player. That's very, very proud of that young man. What do you man. think about this Adam Jones know, for the just, Orioles? I mean, you know, I don't know him that well. I did do a uh, top ten list with David Letterman with him today. We were standing next to each other. And look he's at very that. good. He, he, brought he the did it one take. He did it one take, one which take? was good. We did it in one take. Which was good. You like the ribs my friend Mitch made. Meet yeah. Mitch. M-E-A-T Mitch.com or whatever it is. He's a neighbor of mine and he's also the tailor made rep. Oh. Oh, so perfect. Guess what kind, oh. Guess what kind ribs of clubs? And clubs? Ribs and clubs. Oh. Hey. Get, get the card, Crucky. Get the card. Got more. Hey. And shoes. Oh, my goodness. Golf shoes. Well, what more do you need? Oh. Pretty good. I'm moving to Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'm not coming home. Jonesy, how, how are the ribs? <laughs> <laughs> have at it. We have it. We have plenty. That's the same stuff that was in there. I brought I brought this to these guys because I Cause thought they might like, be hungry. Because we can't miss a meal. No, no. <laughs> hey, how's your son doing from uh, from, uh, from uh, Brown? Brown, they're doing great. Yeah, Sher uh, Sheridan's out here. She came out. Did she? I got my whole family in town. 
Everybody. First time we've been together in about four or five years. Have that's you seen George's, him? George's. Very little. Yeah. <laughs> that's Very George's little. niece. That's Kenny Brett's, the late Kenny oh. Brett's daughter. We went to Brown By the uh, way. when my kids went to Brown. Right. Meredith the Duck. Yep, doing great. Good. I'll tell him he said, hey, yeah, please do. doing good. Please do. Yeah, she's here tonight. Good. Are you going to the gala afterwards? Yes, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll reintroduce you to the gala. To that. Yeah. Oh, my what is it? Remember that night in Cincinnati? What, George, are we you really going to go through all this? No. Your boy, your boy is putting on a show right yeah. now. Yeah. Beltran, Beltran was oh my goodness. Show. He just went the opposite <laughs> field and center field the other way, and then he just hit another <laughs> splash ball. George, I can't believe you brought up Cincinnati. We'll let it go. <laughs> no. it, it wasn't early. We'll just leave it at that. It was kind of hot there that night. Remember it was how like sweaty it was we were? Here, it was here on Saturday, ago. right? Yeah. Were you in town Saturday? No. I know you had a, I would have called you. What's at today? <laughs> at any rate, crunch time for Carlos Beltran. Now, now, Crocky wiped his. <laughs> that's, no, that's got ribs that was, No, that was a different side. Okay, good. We flipped it around. What so else eight you outs. Crocky, you need anything else? Beltron's no, got George, I'm good. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I like your, in, uh, your vest you're wearing. Yeah. yeah. God, I like that. It's leaking. <laughs> but I'm cool. <laughs> Crunch time uh, for Beltron. He gets under that, and now here comes the thing. gold ball. Now, look, Jesse James, Rob Banks, not very far from here in Liberty, Kansas, etc. Maybe there's gold left that he didn't take. I'm going a long way to make that work, George. But isn't again, it amazing, he, isn't it amazing how many guys have hit a home run with the gold ball? Yes. Was yeah. That's what I think is happening. The gold shoes. Let me ask you a combination. Question. Let me ask you a question. If you're State Farm, do you want guys to do it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you really? You oh, are? yeah. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, I don't think they'd like it if it turned out to be like $5 million. Well, probably not there, but. You know, what's what's a fair price to now, pay? Now, here's one shot. Is that Beltran? That yeah. went in the fountain. Wow. In the spray chart. And then, George, I could ask you a very important question when we get done here. It has nothing to do with old All-Star games either, okay? So, look, you're the ambassador. You're the vice president yeah. of baseball operations. Do you have the power to turn on the fountains? Can you do that? For us, I mean, you can do they everything else. Here. You want them on right now? Just, yeah, just say, <laughs> can you turn on the fountains? Can you clap? Hey, can somebody please turn on the fountains for you need Chris? A phone? Well, let's see. Let's see can how much somebody power. Somebody please turn on the fountains let's, for Chris. Let's see how much on power. The count, you have. I'll count down from hey, 10. There, there it is. is. <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing. You are amazing. The Hall of Famer, the greatest royal of them hey. all, George Brett. Thanks, thanks for, for having me. Welcome to Kansas City. Thanks for thanks. coming. Okay. Thanks, George. Okay. Thanks for the ribs, too. Two left in the second round. Then it's time to crown a champion in KC at the State Farm Home Run Derby. MLB at Home is presented by T-Mobile. Here to connect you to what matters most. Learn about T-Mobile's COVID-19 response at T-Mobile.com. And welcome back to Kansas City, where the All-Star festivities continue tomorrow. First, MLB Network has the All-Star Red Carpet Show, presented by Chevrolet at 4 Eastern. Then at 7.30, it's the 2012 All-Star Game on Fox. But right now, we're going to talk a little social media. The Home Run Derby has been trending not only in the U.S., but globally since the event began. The biggest contributor to that, Robinson Cano. He has been responsible for 127,000 hits so far. Some of them positive, most of them maybe not. But Cano hit an all-time high of 15,000 comments during his session of BP. You, we know what it was like here in the stadium where the fans wanted Billy Butler. Cano, however, he's also having fun with it. He, he tweeted, I can't believe how many fans in KC I have. Laugh out loud. Can't win without saying Kate Singh. Chris, let's go back to you. Well, we knew that he had a, a sense of humor and a sense of presence. And uh, thank you, Pedro. So Robbie wanted to let everybody know it's OK. We get it. I think everybody's now, when you got Trumbo coming up, are waiting to see, okay, is he going to hit another one through the wall or, or over the 
the, the roof over there in left field. Well, this is the one they, quote, complained about here, the fans. Like, That's why right. is Trumbo in? Why has Trumbo and not Butler? Now enjoy yeah. this. Yeah. Now he gets into that one. And uh, Buster is uh, Buster only with Robbie Cano at the moment. And Robinson, the fans here reacting strongly during your at bats. Tell me how much that affected you. Well, it's not even affecting me. I mean, I get used to that. Everywhere Yankee go play, we get booed all the time. So, I mean, I get used to it. When did you have an idea that it was going to be like this? Well, I as soon as I just picked up um, my team. But it's all right. Whatever they decide to do, I don't really care about fans. They booed and we get that a lot. Is there anything you felt you did wrong as a hitter? I would say maybe that I was, uh, you know, there's no excuse. I didn't hit it out, but I was a little bit tired. We get here at 4 in the morning, and I just got two hours sleep. Now, your dad helped you win it last year. What did he say to you after it was over tonight? Uh, he didn't say anything. I mean, he think my team wasn't there, but, I mean, like I said, there's no excuses. Now, how are you feeling about your team that you picked? I was feeling good. We went into uh, 35 to 21. That's good. Robinson, thanks. He gets it. He does get oh, it. My oh, my God! Goodness. That's gone. Oh, That's you out. Think? Oh, oh that almost went over everything. Wow. What was more important? Did you see that one before that? The, the line, line drive. drive the, the right opposite center. way. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Second base would have jumped yeah. for that one. He might have had a chance and caught it, Maybe. too. You know who is saying, you know what, I get a break from this tonight, and this is interesting if you watch the Angels. Dino Ebel, the third base coach. Most guys, yeah, they hit a homer, you round third, you slap the third base coach, hand they way to go. Trumbo rounds third, and it's like Earl Campbell coming through the line, okay? I mean, he just nails it. He's saying, give me a couple I mean, of nights off. Would you like Trumbo to be as, as strong as he is? Would you like to be giving him a high five when he's really fired up? No. That's <laughs> right? what I mean. I, I'm not I'm sure keeping I'd be, my hands in my pocket. I'm not sure I'd be too fond of doing it with Trout either. Right. <laughs> he seems like You're he'd right. get pretty excitable. You're right. He must have a bruised hand quite often. He does. Well, meanwhile, as much as he has impressed, and that's not going to quite make it, he's got to get moving because Prince Fielder turned it on in round two with 11 homers to have 16. Carlos Beltran with five has 12. And Trumbo with just two thus far in this round at nine. The top two advance. Ah. And he's under that one. Just missing it right now. Joey Bats. Just like T-ball, right? Like at five years old, six years old? Uh, you know what? I there's so many kids that think, oh, I don't like hitting off the tee. They, and I'll, that's the greatest tool is the tee. You see so many big leaguers who use that oh. uh, for this reason. That ball is teed off. Oh. Did that fella make the grab yes, up there? Did. That's a heck of a grab at 457. Oh. Yes. Well, that's a different sort of grab. He's grabbed by the authorities. That fellow made the, was he barehanded? Yeah, he went barehanded that catch, and then the one, he. The, the guy who caught it made a great play. The guy who was going after it later got a bad jump. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, that was projected at 490. Just, just so you just know. Throwing just throwing it out there. throwing it out there in case you missed it. Wow. Mm. Uh oh. Oh, back, back, right back, 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 back. Way gone. That might have been the biggest splash so far because that was on a line. He needs one more to tie Beltran. Oh, oh man! Gone! That's like using some of the golf equipment George was talking about. Yeah, that's that, that's that Tiger Woods little three iron stinger. So Mark Trumbo coming alive. There's his teammates, Weaver, Trout, and Wilson. Well, he has as many as Beltron now. That's big. Oh. And now he has more than Beltron. Way out of here. Come on.
That went over everything, didn't it? <laughs> it did, didn't it? That went over Dick Hauser's retired number. Number 10, right? Yeah. <laughs> that may not quite have enough juice. So now comes the gold ball. But he has passed Beltron. So that's one hurdle for him. Well, if he can pass Fielder, then he knows he's guaranteed he's a in. spot. He needs three more to tie Prince Fielder and be guaranteed another chance at it. All those angels on their feet. C.J. Wilson oh, ah. taking pictures. And he just gets under that one. So Mark Trumbull, the youngster, the 26-year-old, has put his name now, if not the lore, certainly into the annals of this State Farm Home Run Derby. That was prodigious, fellas. Four fifty-five on this one. Look at this one. Look at look at that. Oh my goodness. Now here's the one. Now look at this fan. Watch the play made. It's the officer out there. Nice. Nice. That's These guys are tough. The yeah. Kansas City Police and Force. And he gives it away. That's great. This was projected for 90. But wait, as they say on late night TV. But wait, there's more. Oh, look at that. Oh. Is this the one yeah. over everything? Great. That's something you can watch over yeah, and over again. Just in slow motion like that, that pretty swing. Have, wow. you, have you ever seen your swing in super slow-mo like that? I've never seen it. I'm going to be right happy. No. Oh, gosh, no. Why would I want to see me in a uniform again? So Prince Fielder with 16, Trumbo now with 13, means Beltran is eliminated. Jordan Batista with 11 just needs three. And he doesn't need to hit anymore in this round. Because then they wipe out the totals and we start anew in the finals. So he just needs three. And if he gets those three, I mean, what, would you stop right there and say save yourself, I would. right? I would. I mean, since they're getting wiped out and they don't yeah, carry start over. Start over. I guess that, to me, would be the advantage of hitting the most in the first round. Right, to be able to know how exactly yeah. how yep. many you need just to get in that final yep. round. Well, Prince had the least of the guys that advanced, and he just teed off in the second round. I guess, I guess you could just say, you know, are you able to, once, if he hits four right here, quick, can he say, okay, now let's just go with the gold ball and see how much money I can make for charity? Well, we have oh, to that's ask. That's a good that's idea. That's a good idea. I like that. I like that idea. Crucky, you trying know to rewrite the rule book. Right. You know what? That's uh, a good one, Crucky. Hey, Crucky, those ribs are starting to really kick in on you. Yeah. They make me smarter. Have another. You should have the whole pan. <laughs> I had the whole pan, I'd still be a D student. <laughs> Most home runs in the majors the last two and a half years. When of 26 men to hit over 50 home runs, that's going to be foul. First, of course, on that list was the one and only Babe Ruth. It's amazing. We say, oh, all he needs is three home runs. And it's not that easy. No. <laughs> I mean, it's like, especially after his first round, you're thinking, oh, that'll be easy for him. But he's been sitting a while, which isn't easy. Yeah, he's sitting down there. And you remember how he turn. started off the first round. Real right. slow to start. Right. And then he started dialing it in. And once he did, it was a show. It's easy to get three when you got 10 outs. Now you need three when you got seven outs. Does this carry? Not quite. And now six outs to get three. Now remember he had the catcher set up on the inside, did, which man. you saw, no more. He's still there. He's, just because he's set up on the inside doesn't mean the ball's going there right now. No. But, but that's where he wants it. He had 43 home runs last year, 54 in 2010. Okay, well, See, you just need three. 
I'm telling you, it's not easy. When you think it's just oh, all you need is that three, but I think Krucky was right. Once you get that one with Jose Bautista, he gets that one, and then they just keep coming. That might be the start. Is that going to go? It's close. It's close. No, no, not quite. Uh oh. Didn't sound like, I mean, he didn't hit that solid. It, it almost sounded like not a crack in the bat, but a, it just. Well, I'll tell you what, to make it fair, sometimes you might have to give a guy like Trumbo a crack in the bat because <laughs> the way he hits those balls. Wow. Well, this one is going to be out of here, so now Batista on the board. Yeah, let me let me just slow everything up and hit one 450. It's amazing. All right, and now we have from Marty quality on and off the air and off the answer, and there it goes back, 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 and it is gone. He has the option if he hits three, just go right to the gold ball Good. and keep hitting. Uh, they changed the rule that quickly, huh? That's right. Just hey, good job. You know what? Thank from, you. You know what you can do from this desk? You can get the fountains turned on, yep. and you right. can change the rules. George, yeah, powerful George desk. is standing behind us. He probably heard me, and he probably went to the yeah. rules committee and said, "We need that change now." Yeah. He he can do a lot of things around this city. You've seen that. And all smile on his face all the time. I mean, he's baseball. Yep. Big Poppy now going to have a word with Batista. You just need one. Now. Poppy had a good first step right there. You see that? He got through there. Hugging Robbie Cano saying, hey, man, I get it. I'm tired, too. I was there. Uh-oh. Underneath. So we have now what we have officially in the State Farm Home Run Derby is drama. We got drama. This is it. I mean, uh, one thing he's put himself in a position for at least a swing off. Yep. Mm. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't think so. No. There, now we're going to the goal ball. Oh, man. So one more home run puts he in the finals with Prince Fielder. Who somebody predicted. A out gives a dreaded swing off. The dreaded, the dreaded swing, off. swing off is in the five swings. Yep. And the most out of those five swings moves on. So here is your gold ball opportunity. And an opportunity to move into the finals. Second round, no gold ball home runs. What's up with that? Fatigue. <laughs> Fatigue. I think you're right. That'd be my guess. I, 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 I think that's got to be frustrating for, for the batting practice pitcher. He starts throwing a couple balls. Now all of a sudden, he's oh. on him. Yes. Uh-oh. And now we have the dreaded swing off. For the look at Trump. You think he's not fired up? I got to go to the cage. Let me take a couple of quick. Well, let me let me throw down some liquid. Trumbo will hit first. Batista next. So Prince Fielder is in the finals. So here are the rules for the swing off. Five swings. If we're still tied, then three swings. Then we go to penalty kicks. <laughs> Who's the oh. goalie? I think they were talking to maybe you might fill in. <laughs> no, no, nothing about that. That's your sport. Family. That's uh, your sport. <laughs> I tell you what they ought to do. I ought to put a net up and have you and me have a have a kickoff, have a penalty kick. We've all, we've done that. She before. wins a lot, doesn't she? I let her win. Let's get oh, it clear. I see. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> she's not watching, huh? Oh, she's watching. <laughs> and rolling her eyes and yeah, I'll pay for that one. And I'm sure the kids are going. He's not right, Mom. <laughs> All right, so here we go. This is for a spot in the finals. Prince Fielder is in. Mark Trumbo gets five swings. Jose Batista gets five swings. They're all American leaguers, so they've long since won it. The Canoes beat the Caps. 
Oh, oh my goodness. I'll tell you that, what. That's, that's more impressive than any of the home runs. How hard they hit the ball through the infield. Would not be fun to be a third baseman with they, they handcuff shortstop. Yeah, so, Nomar. I know it. The shortstop would be way back in the grass. Down to two swings. Look at that arm out there. Two swings for Mark Trumbo. Oh, I didn't Just get that. Just missed that one. Just missed it. Last swing. So now Trumbo trying to just find his range, which is about 460. Well, he found that way back. So the final swing at least hits pay dirt, if you will. And so he has won. Now Jose Bautista, five swings to get two to move on. Now no, very quickly up to bat again. They've gone around the order very quickly to get Bautista up again, huh? No more. <laughs> Be well, nice. Quite if, a be nice if you're a manager. You can just say, "Okay, uh, let's just put Bautista in there again." Yeah, you know, that's who's right. Who's coming up again? Oh, we'll put him in there he again. He hit third. Now he hits fifth. Yeah. Oh man, that one is way back. Yeah. So swing number one is gone for Batista. One more and we'll have our finalists. What did we say? He just needed three? No, he just needs one. And it's not that easy. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is fair. And we have our finalists. And isn't it fitting that the two men in the State Farm Home Run Derby that have hit 50 or more home runs. Prince Fielder, Jose Batista, they're going to be the two. They're going to go at it for the 2012 title. The good thing is it's going to keep all the fans involved, left field, right field. Oh, he didn't do well last year, was ready to go this year, and he knew it. Fielder Batista in the final. T-Mobile and Sprint are joining forces to build America's largest and most reliable 5G network. With more towers and more engineers, you'll get the best 5G network and the best prices. Welcome to T-Mobile. Welcome back to Kauffman Stadium, where everything's up to date in Kansas City. Aerial coverage brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. These are our two remaining Boys and Girls Club of youngsters. The child represented by our winner tonight gets a $50,000 donation from State Farm to their, boy, their home Boys and Girls Club, while the seven other youngsters get a $10,000 donation for their club, and now you know it's a home run derby. When a man with 755 home runs and the standard bear and the all-time home run risk for a long time, Hank Aaron earlier introduced to the crowd. Fans, players salute one of the greats and one of the great gentlemen in this sport. Henry Aaron. Oh, by the way, 2,297 RBIs. <laughs> 755 yeah, home just runs. Just to go with those other stats, right. But this man at the plate, Prince Fielder, did something that Hank Aaron didn't do in Milwaukee or Eddie Matthews didn't do in Milwaukee. He had the most home runs by any Milwaukee player, be it a Brave or a Brewer, when he had 50. Eddie Matthews had the old record. 
at 47. Well, this was your pick, Boomer. This yep. is your pick. No. I am the swami, you know. <laughs> I didn't even have to eat Crucky's ribs to make the pick. Oh, Prince Fielder going to center field. Back, 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 and way out. So he, he was the last man in with five in the first round. But after 11 in the second round, the most in the first two rounds, 16. Remember, the numbers erase. Everybody starts at scratch. He's also hit the longest home runs here tonight. All right, who you got, Nomar? Between these two? Yeah. <laughs> oh, take Prince now. <laughs> right. Oh, really? Are you going to ask that now? <laughs> oh, come on over to my side of the tracks. <laughs> well, this table's getting one-sided right now as we <laughs> lean over to the left. So Prince Fielder took a while to get going. I tell you, if Prince Fielder's able to win this one, he'll only be the second player ever to win two home run derbies. Right. Ken Griffey Jr. is the only one to win multiple home run derbies. He's got three. And he's Whoa! back to back. Look at that. That one is on its way to Independence, Missouri, now that George told me the right direction. That's why I was just wondering. Ken Griffey Jr. won it in back-to-back -back years. Yes. 98 and 99. But Prince Fielder, no one's ever won it for both leagues, though. Representing Correct. both leagues. And potentially both ends of the same state. Right. In St. Louis and in Kansas City. But we get a long way to go. Long way to go. Prince with three, just one out. Nine-year deal with the Tigers. So he will have some of Village's pizza for a few years down the road. Oh, oh it's fair? down the line. It's going to stay fair. God! I don't think he's getting tired. He had a nice rest, though. Nice little rest. I mean, like you said, for him, this is his swing. This is, this is get, normal. This is get out of bed swing. Yeah, that round of BP, get him over, get him in, hit something the other way. It's get him over, get him in, hit a homer. <laughs> I'm just telling you, you watch not only. Oh, oh, oh man, it's a raymaker to center field toward the mountains. God. I'm just saying. This is the start of a big second half for him. I'm telling you. Big. I think it's going to be hard for the National League to catch up now, don't you? I, don't, I think it's out of reach. <laughs> yeah. That might have done it there. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, if these are indoors. We have roof scrapers. Wow. Wow. Imagine if they had the home run derby and, at the drop. They oh. have to have um, referees out there and with the catwalk. determining which catwalk it hit. You know, I remember one of the first ones we did was in the Astrodome. First one we did. It wasn't live at the time in 86. Daryl Strawberry of Mets hit the speaker way on top of the Astrodome. Some of those might have hit the speaker, but that one talks for itself. Almost knocked out Nolan Ryan. How can you do that? <laughs> well, he's definitely putting on a show right now. Say what well, he got his rest, whatever he did. I don't know if he took a nap or whatever he was doing, but he does not look tired at all. Oh, this one is way back, 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 and gone! Batista's coming out. He might be thrown in the towel. Let's see if he hit the catcher on the backswing. Nope. Not oh, he got it. Oh, just his mask bit. a little bit. A little. By the way, there's only one out. Yeah. 
okay. Batista came out and looked. He goes, man, I, I might have started warming up a little early. He might be here a while. This one is ripped. Amazing. Yeah. And out. Buster only. He's he's on it. No more. You were talking about how relaxed he looked. Most of these hitters are going in and taking batting practice between rounds. Prince isn't really doing a lot of that. I asked him, I said, are you taking many swings? He goes, no, not at all. <laughs> See? Well, he has yeah, yeah. what? About 55? I do it out of bed. That's, that's this is what swing. I do. I, but, you know, uh, the promos we run before shows during baseball tonight promoting the State Farm Home Run Derby, he says it on there. He said, he said, I enjoy pleasing people. Well, this, doing is, that. this is pleasurable for a lot of people here tonight. He's doing that. Did he get enough? His ball carries. That looks like he popped that one up. Yeah, he popped it up about. And look, <laughs> it still carries out of it. Still carries out of there. Yeah, they're not scraping the back of the did fence. Did that count? Oh, yeah. Oh, they didn't count that oh, one. Oh, no, it didn't count it? What? Wow. Wow. It's a home run derby. You count them all, don't you? I would think, right? yeah. But so that he made sure. Well, we're going to count no this doubt. one. This is going to be counted as home run number nine. Can't we go? They use instant replay during the season for home run balls. We have to go for that one. That's a good point. I'm just, just throwing it out there. <laughs> we'll get George back here. We can get that done. Yeah, <laughs> if someone can get that rule enforced. Where's George? Oh, wow. <laughs> Ten home runs. So just, five. Just four, four outs, and there's Jose Bautista going, really? My. You know what he's saying? Come on, man. Right? He's right? Like, come on. Well, Bautista did have 11 his first round. So it's not like he hasn't hit this many. Yeah, but he ain't done. No, I'm, I know that. Four outs. Not quite enough there. Oh, kids. Oh, he's still only halfway done with the outs. What a throw for those kids. Hey, I caught a ball hit by Prince Fielder. You know? That's Just awesome. a ball in a line drive. Yeah, and the parents are sitting up there thinking, oh, thank goodness he caught that and it didn't catch him. <laughs> Oh, oh man, Impressive. center field, way back in, gone. Set off the fountains again. Wow. Joey Bats is figuring I need fungal bats. Right? They're still keeping score, the Nas American League and National League? Well, they're just doing it. It's just, just to see. It's a route. <laughs> I think Cano picked it well then, would you say? Yes. He did well. Right? And he didn't hit I mean, any? He knew. I mean, the, the, he knew. He the, didn't need any. I mean, it goes, the three he picked were the final three guys. Yeah. Huh. That's a rainmaker to right field. And a quote, Derek and the Dominoes, let it rain. The only thing the National League team, the American League teams are saying who want to get that home field advantage back is don't wear yourself out. We need you to hit one tomorrow night, right? So Pedro, even though Prince is a tiger, he still likes his friend with the Brewers. Not just his friend. This was his first minor league manager. The two have remained inseparable. I did speak 
to Sandy Guerrero before the Home Run Derby tonight, asked him about the pressure of throwing, and he said, absolutely there's pressure. You have got to be zoned in. If you're wild on this particular day, everyone will know it, and there's a lot of pressure associated. Obviously, he's come through, though. I'd say Sandy has a job. <laughs> he's had a job for a long time yes. because he's one of the good ones. So seven outs, 12 home runs in the finals here for Prince Fielder, who's not done. And getting a little help from his son, a little water. Oh, that had a hair on it, but that will be a. Now, now here goes the gold ball. You know, in the final round, Robbie Cano had 12 last year, and that's a final round record. So he's trying to put up something about as high as you can put it. Everybody on their feet here at Kauffman Stadium in its 40th season. How many more gold ball homers do we get to half a mil? 460 now, 460,000. Now well, he gets under that one. At least two. But he has laid down the gauntlet to Jose Bautista as Prince Fielder has hit 12. And look at this. Thank you. I tell you, we might have to go back to the one that was taken away from him. Let's not forget that. He has 12, but there was one that they said was no home run, which could have been 13. This was 476 here, fellas. This a mere 430. <laughs> it just, it's just how long it stays in the air. It just, God, yeah, I like the fight. That, that, one, that one I like. He just dropped his arm. That one didn't look as ferocious, but went even farther with the way he used those arms. Look at this. You know, there are oh. very few. Through your years, who certainly from that side of the plate comes to mind getting them that high, that long? Couple? Willie McCovey for me. Strawberry. McGuire. Uh, Daryl Strawberry used to hit some yep. long, high ones. Mark McGuire. Hey, Jeff. Hey, baby. Hey, why you got to make us a tough on this? I don't know. You got it. Uh. He made it tough, all right. Yeah, he did. <laughs> so, the man that has the most homers in the last two and a half years, does he have at least 12 in his back tonight? MLB at Home is presented by T-Mobile. Here to connect you to what matters most. Learn about T-Mobile's COVID-19 response at T-Mobile.com. Sure, it's a show, but some have turned the derby into a showcase of their graceful swing, their power, the power of positive thinking, and the ties that bind us all to baseball. Here in Kansas City, who will be the winner for 2012? Last year, Robbie Cano, big poppy before that. Prince Fielder, the lone National League winner in the last five years, of course, trying to represent the American League and win this thing. Justin Morneau in the Josh Hamilton year, and Vladimir Guerrero at uh, San Francisco. And that's the last five. So as uh, in Oklahoma, the great musical by Rodgers and Hammerstein, everything's up to date in Kansas City. We've gone about as far as we can go. 12 homers by Prince Fielder in the finals. Jose Batista's got to hit 12. That's it. Prince will be king. Well, Bautista would have to do something that hasn't been done in the final round. And that's hit 13. That's a good start. That's a good start because remember, Nomar, he the first, Greg Brucky, the first two times at bat, he had four or five outs, I think, yeah. before his first home run. Yeah, he was playing catch up a lot of this, these rounds. Just a double. That's not going to work. Approaching half million dollars donation. 
So Batista, traded from Pittsburgh to Toronto, a struggling hitter, a player to be named later, Robinson Diaz, a catcher. I think Toronto might have got the better of that deal. Maybe. Maybe. Just time left. Jury's though. still out. Jury's still out. Will this ball get out? It's going to be close down to left field. Yep. Hit the top of the wall and goes over. That's because you can't reach down over exactly. that wall. Catch that balls like they did with Prince. Right there. This is to left field. Does it have enough juice? It is oh. not quite. Think Prince is tired? <laughs> Bet he hope there's not a, a bat off. A swing off or a bat off or penalty kicks. <laughs> All of the above. He needs 12. He needs 10 more. Mats will be out number four. Great job by all these guys putting on a show for everyone tonight. I mean, it, you know, it's a three hour deal. Uh, it's a lot of effort. Oh, my goodness. And he's still hitting them far. Way far. Wow. Gone. I don't think people realize how exhausting it is to be able to swing that hard every single time with that many home runs and for this long. I mean, it's it's impressive. Not only the distance. Well, that distance is impressive. Back, 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 back. And we may have ourselves some drama yet. Oh, boy. This would be something. I need 12. I need a 12 run homer. See, if we had maybe a point system, maybe you can get a few extra points. We had targets out there, something to look at, maybe opposite way. You know, how many yeah. points did the ribs have? They, they, they won all the brownie points with me. <laughs> yeah, I can see some of them on your shirt. That's okay. That's why they have dry cleaners. Yeah. Oh. Gone. Another. That was That's, a line drive. It's going to be gone. He needs seven. A few home run hitters up seven there to in Toronto, haven't they? Yes, they have. Seven to tie, though. Yeah. It's doable. He broke the record held by George Bell, 47, the Toronto record. Of course, Carlos Delgado hit moon shots, didn't he? Delgado would hit those moon shots. Like, yes, like like I mean, when, there were times when, you know, when, when it would be covered, when the dome, when the roof was closed, and it looked like, I think that's going to. I mean, that's a high, yeah. high roof there in Toronto, and it was like, I, I think he's going to hit that, <laughs> and you didn't think it was ever going to come down. Three outs to go. He needs seven homers. There's one of them. That won't be far enough. Prince Fielder won it in 2009 as a brewer in St. Louis. About a four hour ride. On I 7. Trying to win it in Kansas City, the other end of Missouri, for the American League and the Detroit Tigers here in 2012.
And now the gold ball. Will there be gold ball magic here tonight? We've seen a lot of it, especially in the first round. Everybody on their feet. Because, as the song goes, it's closing time. And the fans don't want to close it down yet. Good job by them now. It's good to see the fans on their feet. No one's They've left. Been, no. They've been into it the entire time. It's like a Blue Jays home game, huh? At the moment. Looking for that one pitch, that one up and in. Well, it's the first gold ball home run since round number one. Maybe the start of something supernatural. Needs five. Looking for that one. He knows this is the gold ball. He knows he only has one more out. Yep, that's pop. And that'll do it. Prince Fielder is the winner of the State Farm 2012 Home Run Derby. And a great effort by Jose Batista. But Prince is the king here in Kansas City. T-Mobile and Sprint are joining forces to build America's largest and most reliable 5G network. With more towers and more engineers, you'll get the best 5G network and the best prices. Welcome to T-Mobile. State Farm Home Run Derby presented by State Farm. For auto home life and banking, get to a better state. And also in part by Ally Bank. No nonsense, just people sense. And by Toyota Care, caring for you and your car. We've just concluded the 2012 State Farm Home Run Derby here in Kansas City. And of course, the festivities, which as George Brett has said, it's going on since the beginning of the weekend, really swing in tomorrow. MLB Network is the All-Star Red Carpet Show, presented by Chevrolet, 4 p.m. Eastern. 7.30, it's the 2012 All-Star Game on Fox. Aerial coverage tonight brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Now, before we talk to the champion, let's look back now at how Prince Fielder won it for the second time in four years. Here, fellas, our Audi moment of achievement. 
Well, Prince really just put on a show here, and that's what we heard Josh Hamilton talk about. All you really wanted to do was put on the show, and he did. I mean, going out there and swinging like he normally does when he gets out of bed, that's hard every single time, and it paid off for him today. Yeah, you thought after the first round, you didn't know if he was even going to advance to the second round, but then all of a sudden it just took off for him. Like, like Nomar said, that this is his everyday swing. He's doing nothing different than he does in normal batting practice throughout the season, and that's why he has the advantage over most. Well, he had the advantage overall tonight. Let's go over to Pedro Gomez. Chris, thank you. Tonight, Major League Baseball and State Farm combined to donate much, much to the community here, and $615,000, some of that going to the Boys and Girls Club of America. I'm joined by Major League Baseball's Tim Brosnan, as well as State Farm Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer, Rand Harvard, who's here to make a very special presentation. Thank you. First of all, Prince, uh, congratulations. You put on a wonderful show for the fans tonight. S State Farm is pleased to sponsor this event, as well as to be a partner in the Home Run Derby. And tonight, for every home run that was hit, both State Farm and Major League Baseball are going to contribute to communities around the country and help them get to a better state. So tonight, I want to present you with this check for $615,000. Congratulations. Thank you, Rand. And now we have Major League Baseball executive Rob Manfred, also here to make a very special presentation. Rob? Prince, um, on behalf of Commissioner Sealy and all of us at Major League Baseball, congratulations on winning the 2012 State Farm Home Run Derby. You joined Ken Griffey Jr. as the only player to win the Home Run Derby more than once, and you're the only player to win it on behalf of both the American and National League. It was a great performance. Congratulations. But don't drop it. <laughs> Prince, having been here a few times already, how does that correlate to being successful in this event? Uh, well, it definitely helps. I mean, uh, the first time it's weird, you know, without the cage behind you, so, you know. Uh, I don't know, I'm just happy I won. What is it about Missouri? Because you won in 2009 in St. Louis, you come west on I-70, and you win it in Kansas City. What is it about Missouri? I don't know, it's, uh, I guess it's the great fans here, you know? Missouri has great fans. And you've had the same batting practice pitcher the entire time, going all the way back to the minor leagues. What did Sandy Guerrero mean to you? Oh, he means a lot. Uh, not only did he help me get to where I am today, but, uh, you know, he's a good friend. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's like family. Prince, congratulations. Thank you, Enjoy, Enjoy it. it. Chris, Chris, back to you. All right, Pedro and Prince, thank you very much and congratulations. And, you know, when he had those little bats over his shoulder, I had to laugh. <laughs> it looked like a toothpick. And we talked about it uh, at the beginning, fellas, that... Prince Fielder is one of the veterans, because you can call him a veteran now, who has just embraced this whole event, embraced what it's about, embraced going about it, and he barely got in. You know, he barely had, he had a gold ball home run to be the last man in to the second round, and he made the most of it. Well, I think it's also going to be spreading from other guys watching the home run derby because you have a guy like Prince Fielder. We talked about David Ortiz. These veteran guys now who are embracing this event. And once again, we had guys making us ooh and awe and going wow once again, at getting us out of our mm -hmm. seats, getting the fans out of their seats. And that's what this event is all about. And, and kudos, kudos to Prince Fielder once again to get another home run derby title. Yeah, congratulations to Prince, but you know, Nomar mentioned, you know, we got to see a guy like Mark Trumbo take BP that we don't get to see. Uh, McCutcheon take BP that we don't get to see. I mean, it's so impressive to watch young players come up and, and especially what Mark Trumbo did, you know, getting almost into the finals uh, before Batista passed him up. So to watch a young kid like that and the line drive home runs that he hit and the power, yeah, you know that this is, he's going to be one of these guys, he's going to come back and keep coming back until he wins it. And I just think this is a trampoline 
for Prince in the second half. We'll see. You've said that. You called it, and it's we'll a good see. pick. That was fun. It was a lot of fun. The fans got into it. Nobody left. And we have the Prince again was king at the 2012 State Farm Home Run Derby. Coming up next is the 2012 George Taco Bell All-Star Legend Celebrity Softball Game. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For John Cruck and Nomar Garcia Parra, always good to be with you fellas. For Buster Olney and Pedro Gomez, thanks for hanging out with us. I'm Chris Berman. So long from Kansas City. Prince was up to date.